this 10-game homestand began, your Rangers struggled to win in Arlington after winning four of the last five games against playoff-bound teams. Texas has not only started to regain its home field advantage, but more importantly, gotten back into the wild card playoff hunt. Tonight, Colby Lewis takes the Globe Life Field mound as he leads the Rangers against the division leading Houston Astros. Next on Fox Sports Southwest. Rangers baseball is presented by AT&T, Hubert's TV. It is a hot and windy night here at Globe Live Park. A great summer evening for a ball game between the division leading Houston Astros and your Texas Rangers. Welcome into this Monday night of Ranger baseball along with Tom Greaves, Steve Busby. Glad you could join us. Pull up a chair. You're going to like this one. The first of three, the Rangers and the Astros, and they get the veteran on the mound tonight for the Rangers, Colby Lewis. Yep, that's a good thing, Buzz, because he's pitching some good baseball. He's won his last three starts. He's pitched against the Astros three times this year. He's 2-0 and against them. And in his career against the Astros, he's had 10 starts. He's 7-1 with a 191 ERA. Colby's pitching exactly the way you'd like to see him pitch right now at the top of his game. The Rangers are playing good baseball. They need to get on a roll and start playing some great baseball because time's running out. Well, they've got the Astros right where they want them. That's on the road for Houston here in Arlington tonight. And the Rangers in the first of three looking to make a statement in the American League West. Adrian Beltre pleasing the fans. A home run would do more than the autograph. We'll be back with the starting lineup and the first pitch right after this on Fox Sports Southwest. you buy your Texas Ford dealer. Visit your local Texas Ford dealer to kick off the summer right. Ford is the best in Texas. By AT&T, Uverse TV. Uverse has more live TV channels on the go than cable. And by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. 
mostly sunny sky out here this evening. Uh, very hot night at the ballpark. Wind coming in strongly from left center field toward home plate before we get things underway. Let's head down and say hello to Emily Jones. Em? Well, Buzz, as the season winds down, uh, games become magnifying. Wins still count the same. However, when you're playing a team that you're chasing in your division and one that is leading the division, it might tend to take on a little more importance. However, it's important for the players not to look at it that way too much. You can't really look at it that way, but it's, it's definitely important. You know, we just got to go out and uh, take it one game at a time, kind of like we've uh, we tried to do all year. And, uh, you know, play our play our best ball and and, uh, and try to try to come out on top. And fortunately, it appears that at least of late, the Rangers have figured something out here at home. They had struggled so mightily throughout the season, but really seems like they're putting something together here at home. And they've played really good competition the first two series in this homestand. That will only continue here tonight. Uh, should be a great series for us here over the next three days, Buzz. We're all looking forward to it, Em. Uh, 58 ball games to go in this uh, 2015 regular season. The Rangers hope that there are many more after that. Well, Tom's going to tell you now about the uh, Houston Astro lineup that will face Kobe Lewis. Well, it's a good lineup. The Astros are hot. Jose Altuve leads it off. Nine home runs this year for Altuve. That's already a career high. Newly acquired Carlos Gomez bat second. Carlos Correa leads American League shortstops in home runs. He's only played 47 games. He hits third. Preston Tucker is fourth. Evan Gaddis is fifth. Jed Lowry in the lineup after being on the disabled list for a long time is sixth. Colby Rasmus is seventh. Luis Valbuena with 19 home runs is batting eighth. And the catcher is Jason Castro. And that lineup uh, put forth by A.J. Hinch. And it's uh, the one that's going to face Colby Lewis, our progressive scouting report on Colby. As we have talked about, he's had great success against the Astros, primarily because they've been a very aggressive ball club. They go up there already to swing the bats. And Colby, very adept at using that against aggressive ball clubs. He will turn that around in his favor. And if he has a good slider tonight, which he has had his last four outings, he should produce a lot of strikeouts, particularly strikeouts in important situations. Runner on second, nobody out. Runner at third, less than two out. Colby, very adept at uh, putting guys away if he has that good slider tonight. And let's take a look at the Ranger defense behind Colby Lewis this evening. It's brought to you by Fred Loya Insurance. The defensive unit has been playing well for the Rangers. Hamilton to Shields and Chu in the outfield for the Rangers tonight. Elvis Andrews just one error in his last 11 ball games. That's important because Elvis has already committed as many errors as he did all of last year, but not many lately, and that's a big improvement for the Ranger defense. Marlon and Odor and Beltre joining him with Bobby Wilson behind the plate tonight. Now, Kobe ready to go. Jose Altuve steps in. And the first pitch is lined right back up the middle. Diving stop by Odor from his knee. He throws not in time. What a shame. What a play by Rugnet Odor. And no time to get back to his feet. And how he has that much arm strength, I don't know. It's a shame he didn't get it out. And the only reason he didn't is because it's Altuve running. Almost any other right-hand hitter, except maybe Mike Trout and a couple of others, is going to be out on that play. Beautiful range, strong arm. Accurate throw, just missed getting Altuve at first base. Nice try. Good gracious. Well, if the first pitch of this series indicates anything about the remainder of the series, we're in for a dandy. Well, we highlighted in the pregame show the shortstop double play, uh, <laughs> second place double play combination for both teams, and already one of them has a base hit, and one of them almost made a spectacular play. <laughs> Probably see a lot of that this series. Shortstop and second baseman for both teams being key members of, of these contests. Carlos Gomez, newly acquired uh, from the Milwaukee Brewers by the Astros. Gomez, uh, an all-star center fielder, a gold glove center fielder in Milwaukee, a 286 average in his short time here. And a check swing foul. He's down on the count. No balls and two strikes. Now, Gomez with Milwaukee was hitting 262 at eight home runs, 43 driven in. And his numbers, as you saw with the uh, Astros, a couple of runs driven in. He joined the ball club uh, right at the trade deadline. Altuve, the league leader in stolen bases. 
away from first as Colby misses inside. Carlos Gomez came over along with uh, Mike Fires, and Fires will start tomorrow night. Big tall right-hander, along with uh, an international slot signing bonus. There goes Altuve, a little number out towards second. Charging is Odor, the shovel to first. They got him, and Altuve kept on going around to third, and somehow was able to maintain contact with the bag as Adrian Beltre applied that tag constantly from the time he got there. Well, that's some kind of base running right there. Altuve sprinting towards second, has a pretty good idea what's happening, knows it's going to be hard to get the ball all the way across the diamond, and if there's a first baseman in the American League who can throw from first to third and get somebody, it's Mitch Moreland. Yeah. Mitch has a strong arm. Threw a strike over to third base. Altuve is just too quick. That's a play you won't see very often. Oh, you're right, Tom. That, that is great base running and a great effort by Mitch and uh, Rugnet Odor. And uh, Jeff Bannister still looking back in the dugout to uh, Steve Bouchel, trying to get the information from Joey Probinski upstairs about that play at third base, whether there was any video evidence that uh, Altuve lost contact with the bag, and apparently there was not. Different parts of his body touched the bag, but it doesn't look like there was any moment in time where no part of his body was on the bag. Two batters, two nice plays by Odor. So, Altuve at third down with one out. Carlos Correa, the uh, uber prospect. And now uh, applying his wares at the major league level, and he has impressed almost everybody that has seen him. Takes a strike on the outside corner to even things up. Correa, 299, 12 home runs, 32 driven in. And 348 on base percentage. And this young man, just 20 years of age. Out of play to the right. I think the easy comparison to make, Buzz, is Alex Rodriguez, yeah. who came up to the big leagues with Seattle when he was 20 years old and looked a lot like this. Although I don't know that I don't know that Alex took the lead by storm as soon as he got to the big leagues, quite like Correa has. Now Correa about an inch taller, I think, than, than Alex. And uh, I, I I can't remember exactly what Alex looked like when he got to the big leagues. Correa pulls one into the left field corner. It's hooking at the pole, and it is gone. It hit the foul pole. It stayed fair somehow. And Carlos Correa with a two-run home run has the Astros on the board. If there's any way that ball is going to stay fair. Correa now has 13 home runs in 48 games. That's roughly a third of the season. And it's pretty obvious what kind of numbers he would put up if you project that over an entire season. Pitch it's probably six inches inside. And there's, you know, we said you won't see many players go first to third on an infield grounder like Altuve did. You won't see many guys hit that pitch out of the ballpark and keep it fair either. Yeah. One guy that we saw for a long time do that was Juan Gonzalez. Mm -hmm. Juan could keep his hands in, get the good part of the bat on the ball, and keep a pitch like that fair. But that's a rare sight to see that kind of a swing on that kind of a pitch and the ability to hit a home run fair on a pitch that far inside. One and one to uh, Preston Tucker. Well, he shoots one foul into the seats down the first base side. One ball, two strike. Yeah, it's one thing on a pitch like that to make solid contact. That's that's not unheard of, certainly not an easy pitch to do it. But to hit that ball so it stays fair and get enough distance on it so it goes out of the ballpark, that's a whole different deal. But, uh, Carlos Correa found a way to do it. 13 home runs now for him, and Tucker fouls back the next pitch. Still one ball, two strikes. Tucker hitting at 265. He has 10 home runs and has driven in uh, 28. Watch this swing. The pitch is six inches inside. Watch his hands. When he makes contact with the ball, his hands are almost even with his stomach. That's how far he pulled the bat to get the good part of the bat on the ball. A line drive, but played perfectly by Adrian Beltre. Had it positioned just right on the left side of the diamond. Okay, we're going to look at that swing one more time. Watch as he pulls his hands in 
where he makes contact. His hands are just about even with the buttons on his jersey. And that's the only way he could hit the ball solidly enough to hit it that far. And the only way he could make the angle of the bat such that the ball stayed fair. You might see a guy make contact with that ball and pull it about 50 feet foul yeah. over the dugout or something. But that's that's not something you can teach right there. You can either do that or you can't. You can watch that for 100 years and not be able to do it. An average hitter. Kevin Gaddis coming out of his shoes trying to hit that Colby Lewis fastball. No balls, two strikes. Gaddis handling the DH chores. You saw the numbers, 17 home runs, second on the team. 59 RBI is leading the Astros. That is off the slider, one ball, two strikes. The Astros are now 149 home runs as a team. That is the best in baseball. Gaddis gone on strikes. Colby with that sharp slider. Gets the final out. Two runs, two hits. The big shot off the bat of Carlos Correa. After a half inning, Astros two, Rangers coming up. Tom's going to tell you about the Southwest Airlines. That's a great fighter. Delano DeShields leads off. He's hit 305 in his last 15 ball games. Rupnet Odor is second. Prince Fielder is third. Adrian Beltre hitting 321 in his last 20 games is batting fourth. Followed by Mitch Moreland and Josh Hamilton. Shin Su Chu is hitting seventh since the All Star break in 11 starts. Shin Su is hitting 366. Hot hitting Elvis Andrus is hitting eight, and Bobby Wilson gets the start behind the plate. And Jeff Bannister putting that lineup together, and uh, they will face the young right hander, Lance McCullers, who deals strike one. McCullers, the youngest starting pitcher in the major leagues right now, 21 years of age, a very lively fastball, a power curveball, and an improving changeup. And man uh, grew up around the major leagues, uh, at least as far as his dad telling him stories about it. His dad, you'll remember, uh, pitched for seven different seasons at the Major League level. And one of those was with the uh, Texas Rangers. Very advanced, so Lance McCullers is uh, because of that experience. Inside, two balls and a strike to Delano DeShields. So the Astros have the youngest starting pitcher. They've also got the youngest position player in Korea. Yeah, right. The 2-1 pitch. That's on the inside corner. It's worth noting that Paul Schreiber, tonight's home plate umpire, you remember the last time the Rangers had Paul Schreiber behind the plate, we saw a lot of low pitches called. And if either of these two pitchers or anybody that comes to the ball game can keep the ball down at the bottom of the zone, he's got a, a better than even chance of getting it called with first strike. Now the count has gone full, so Jason Castro is going to go out and have a little chat with uh, Lance McCullers. McCullers, along with being the youngest starting pitcher, is the second youngest pitcher overall. 
Young man up in uh, Toronto, Osuna, the reliever. Roberto Osuna is currently the youngest. Foul back. We'll try the 3 2 pitch again. McCullers started the year at double A. Was promoted to triple A, but never got a chance to pitch there. He was called three days later to the major leagues. Made his de uh, debut back on May 18th. High ball four. Lost it. That's the one you have to lay off of. The mid 90s fastball that's high and out of the strike zone. The Rangers get their leadoff man aboard. Let's take a look at the Astros defense behind Lance McCullers tonight. And with Carlos Gomez in center, it is improved. And even without him, they had a 987 fielding percentage. That's second in the American League. Tucker and Rasmus surrounding Carlos Gomez. Valbuena getting uh, his first career start at first base two nights ago. He's back there again, and uh, he's joined by Altuve and Correa. And also Jed Lowry over at third. Well, the leadoff block gets the Shields aboard. Now Rugnet Odor will step in. The Shields, very much a stolen base threat, and that's something that the Rangers have encouraged the liner to do, especially uh, you get down early like this. You want to make a statement in the first inning, get on base and swipe a bag for the team. The liner has 16 stolen bases. That's currently tied for fifth in the American League. Odor hitting at 262 with eight home runs. He has driven in 34. Rook dead. Remember, broke in with the Rangers against the Astros last year. He lands one to right field, a base hit. Not stopping at second. The line of the Shields headed to third. He beats the throw. And the Rangers, just like that, a walk and a single have runners at the corners and nobody out. We talked about Altuve going from first to third on an infield roller. A little more likely for a guy to go first to third on a base hit to right field, but you won't see guys do it much quicker than that. Rasmus has a nice arm out in right field, and that ball is hit hard. I would say the majority of the runners would stop at second base, but most of the runners can't run like this. The thing we've noticed about Delano is he cuts the corners without ever breaking stride. He just is at full speed going around the bag and just allows him to get to the next base that much quicker. Well, Rangers down by two, but Prince Fielder an opportunity to uh, lessen that deficit. Fielder taking ball one. Prince, a little bit of a downturn, although he showed signs yesterday of coming back at him, one for four, and he's gone uh, 0 for his last 13 with runners in scoring position. Has to change that right about now. The Shields at third, Odor at first. And the 1 0 pitch is high and away. Two balls and no strikes. McCullers is one of those kids that got to the big leagues quickly. Pitched in A ball, first couple of full seasons in the minor leagues. And he had 29 innings in double A this year. Gave up two earned runs in 29 innings in Corpus Christi. And he was in the big leagues. Fielder shoots a base hit to left field. The Shields score. The Rangers cut the deficit in half. It's now two to one. And still nobody out. One thing that's happened so far with the Ranger hitters is they haven't allowed him to get a count favorable enough to feature his off-speed pitches. He's thrown all fastballs. Hasn't thrown as many strikes as he normally does. And the Rangers have taken advantage of that. Work the walk and two solid base hits. The pitch goes Brent Strong out to talk to his young right hander. Another look at uh, Prince Fielder's base hit. McCullers, in his last outing against the Angels, went seven innings, did not walk a hitter. Moved up uh, one run on five hits in seven innings. The Rangers treating him uh, in a manner which he is not accustomed to at the moment. Another good at bat to get it started by Delano. A lot of leadoff hitters wouldn't have walked if they saw the same pitch as Delano saw. And the fastball in at the knees to Beltre. Adrian at 262. Eight home runs, 27 driven in. 
Got Odor at second, Fielder at first. Nobody out here in the bottom of the first inning. One or oh and two. We were talking about Lance McCullers. We'll take a look at our Kubota stats, our power stats of the evening concerning Lance McCullers, first pitcher in Astros history to allow three earned runs or fewer in 12 of his first 13 career starts. The Astros have had some pretty good pitchers come through over the years, too. It's, uh, it's pretty good company. Nothing and two as Beltre continuing to poke difficult pitches foul. Adrian, 320 on this homestand. He has gone eight for 25. He's increased his consecutive game streak to three on six for 12. He's got Odor and Fielder at second and first. Rangers with a run across here in the first inning. The colors now not able to get together on the sign with uh, Jason Castro, so he steps off. McCullough's not a big guy. He's 6'1", not 208 pounds. One and two. Saw Jason Castro with that uh, target. Put that target up in the air, and he... Pitch was down and away. That one just missed low and outside. Sometimes catchers, if they think a, a runner at second base or at first base is trying to relay the location, will do that. You get an 0-2 count, a 1-2 count, and they'll put a glove up like they want the pitch up and then throw something down and away, see if they can cross everybody up. Two and two the count to Adrian. How do you follow that pitch? I have no off. idea. That's that power curve. Yep. Might be the first one we've seen. And sometime he, somehow he fouled that pitch off. Did it bounce first? Yes. Sure it did. It he did. hit it on a bounce. Yep. Playing cricket. Yep. And that goes a double. I don't know how in the world he did that. Well, if it didn't bounce, he would have missed it. It had, it, <laughs> had to, it had to bounce up six inches to hit his bat. <laughs> That's incredible. We've seen a few things in the first inning that you don't see very often. Yeah. Some base running things, and there's a batting thing you don't see very often. And there's a drive to left center field that is up the alley. Odor scores. Prince being waved around third. He is going to score. Beltre going for three. He's in with a slide, and the Rangers have turned it around as Beltre triples in two. The Rangers lead it three to two. Now there's something else you don't see in the first inning very often. Adrian Beltre tripling in Prince from first base. That ball just got in the gap and just kept on going. They couldn't stop it. And he came back with a fastball after that power curveball was fouled off on the bounce. It ran back to the center of the plate, rolled all the way to the wall, and then they couldn't pick it up in time to keep Adrian from getting a triple. That's Beltre's third triple this year. He had one all of last year. But uh, the triple and two RBI. Rangers on top, three to two. And here's Mitch Moreland with the infield overshifted to the right side. Nothing in one. Well, he went to something other than the fastball. Looked like a changeup, maybe. 20 pitches, no outs. And Lance McCullers has not been treated like this in the big leagues. Most of his starts have been exceptional. One earned run or less in eight of his 13 starts. That pitch a little bit low. One and one to Mitch. Moreland leading the team with 16 home runs. He is second to Prince Fielder with 54 RBI. Currently hitting at 284. The Astro infield. Uh, giving up the entire center of the diamond from a normal second base position around the third. It's wide open. Only person out there is second base umpire Jim Reynolds, and I don't I think if you hit it to him, he's probably not going to uh, throw you out. A ball and a strike. 
Now time called. Castro uh, asked for time. Well, the Rangers have made a, a very big statement in the bottom of this first inning. Astros leading 2-0 at the start of the bottom of the, su- of the first. Rangers came back. There's a shot back off the uh, backstop. But Beltre, understanding how that ricochet can come sometimes right back to the home plate, delayed. And uh, with nobody out, uh, that's probably a very, very wise move. Yeah, he knows that could easily, instead of bouncing toward first, bounce right back to the catcher. So he has to wait to see what's going to happen. As he waited... It kicked hard toward first base. Yeah, you're right, Buzz. He made the right decision. If he goes after seeing what happened, then the first baseman, Valbuena, probably comes in and has a play. Uh, one, two of ball. The, one of the things that's, you know, kind of tricky. Usually you throw a pitch that wild over the catcher's head. It's an automatic run. But yeah. This is one of the parts where that's not true. Two balls and one strike. Which uh, a little better than the Major League average. And situations like this getting that runner home from third Here's that uh, sharp breaking ball two balls two strikes the colors last couple of years has been rated as having the best breaking ball in the Astros organization he's been as high as the number five prospect according to baseball America in the Houston chain two and two to Mitch Pop foul that will reach the seats. Well, along with uh, putting three on the board, the Rangers making McCullers work here in the first inning. A warm night, 97 degrees or so at first pitch. Crowd just settling in, and uh, they are in for a treat. You're all in for a treat this next three nights. And Mitch doing a pretty good job spoiling it. Good breaking ball. That's 25 pitches now into the fifth hitter, and still nobody out. And they are definitely giving him a workout here in the first inning. A lot of room between the shortstop and the third baseman. Mm-hmm. Ground ball right to the umpire there, and you got a base hit and an RBI. Three balls, two strikes. And the colors. Struggling here in the first, and the book on him, and this is what we've been told, was that uh, very intense competitor, and sometimes that can get in your way. You can get in your own way. You get too upset about things and you take it out on yourself, fight yourself instead of fighting the opposition. Payoff pitch. Little looper out to center. It is a base hit. Beltre will score. Melvin with the RBI. The Rangers now lead it four to two. So the thing about it's five it's five batters, but the Shield saw six or seven pitches. Mitch saw six or seven pitches. So it's only five hitters, but it's been about 26 or 27 pitchers. Like something cutting in on the fist. Jammed Mitch, but he muscled it barely over Correa's head for an RBI hit. Well, the leadoff walk followed by single, single, triple, single. Rangers with four across, and Josh Hamilton is standing at the plate. Hamilton, of course, accounting for both runs in yesterday's ball game for the Rangers, his fifth home run of the year. A two-run blast, and that propelled uh, the Rangers and Martin Perez to a two-to-one win. A power changeup, nothing in one. Hamilton hitting at 245. He has now driven in 16 on base percentage, as Josh was talking about. Uh, not anywhere near where he would like it or where he expects it to be. One ball, one strike. Tied for the most this season. The four earned runs that he's allowed tonight. Lance McCullers. Josh Fields. Loosening in that uh, Astro bullpen. Well, one thing with the Astros pitching, with Fires starting tomorrow, he really is their sixth starter. McHugh, McCullers, Keuchel, Kazmir, Feldman, which leaves six guys in the bullpen. Mm-hmm. And so on a night where you might have your starter go short, the bullpen's a little short as well. 
Alabama AT&T U-verse Rewind. We'll take you back to yesterday in the sixth inning. Josh Hamilton. With a blast into right field. The fifth home run of the year. A two-run shot. That was all the Rangers had. And that was all they would need. Hamilton here gone on strikes. That is just the first out here in, this, in the first inning. The colors gets the strikeout. It's a changeup. A little bit down, a little bit out of the strike zone. Josh couldn't couldn't lay off that pitch. The one gone here is Shin Su Chu. Yeah, apparently, McCullers learned how to throw that changeup from uh, working out with Chris Archer, the uh, Rays pitcher down in, in Tampa Bay. McCullers is from Tampa Bay, and apparently holds it. Uh, he calls it the Vulcan pitch. Holds it in between his middle finger and his ring finger. Who threw that, Danny Patterson? Yeah, so I'm, I'm trying to. It was it was Patterson, wasn't it? I think Benji Gill taught Danny Patterson yeah. that pitch. It's it's been around under different names. Some people call it the Mister Spock and uh, uh -huh. live long and prosper pitch. And if you throw it well enough, I guess you can live long and prosper. Yeah, you also call it anything you want. <laughs> <laughs> if you throw it well enough, that's right. <laughs> 2-0 to Chu. Jin Su at uh, 239, 13 home runs, 48 driven in. Shops that one foul, and it's 2-1. and one. For a young starter, McCullers already has a complete game. Beat Baltimore, nine-inning complete game. Didn't walk a batter, struck out 11 on 107 pitches. That's the most pitches he's thrown in the game this year. I'm sure they're concerned about his youth his inexperience long season how many pitches how many innings all those things I went to she would drive to right field look it up is Rasmus goodbye Good you are. You will have a game like this, and more than one game throughout your career. He hasn't had one yet. Uh, he's had one tonight. Jin Su Chu, home run number 14. And the Rangers have hung a six on the board in the first. Well, that's a nice thing to see too. Pitch up and in. That's a pitch that his goal cuts that ball in is to jam the hitter, and he didn't. Chu got the good part of the bat on it and lifted it right out of the ballpark. Chu hitting 370 since the All-Star break and the starts that he's had. That's a great thing to have going on right now. One of the reasons the Rangers offense is clicking now better than it was earlier. He's like Chu are getting hot. Elvis fouls it out of play. And the count is one and one. Elvis is the eighth hitter the Rangers have sent to home plate in this first inning. Six of them have scored. There's still just one out. Elvis at 356 or 256 for the year. Dollars drops one in. It's one and two. And that is inside. And AJ Hinch is saying, all right, I've got six guys in the bullpen. I don't want to go to the bullpen, but how many pitches can I let this kid throw in the right. first inning? This will be 41. Pulled on the ground by the third baseman Lowry in the left field. Elvis continues the string. Well, we, over the last two weeks, we've seen that ball hit by the Rangers a few times and seen some third basemen make some very nice plays against them. Uh, Lowry wasn't able to duplicate what some of the third basemen have, making, have been making, the type of play they've been making against the Rangers. Well, that is a base hit. That is the sixth hit of this first inning. Bobby Wilson now, the number nine hitter up there. And he takes strike one. I guess the guy I was thinking of was Duffy for San Francisco, made a couple of plays right. on that ball. Yeah, a couple of them yesterday. Yeah. Maybe a few more in the course of the series. Right center field. That is down for a hit. That's going to be it. 
Elvis around to third. I don't think he's running that nope. here now. That is it. A.J. Hitch bouncing out of the uh, Astros dugout, and he will signal to the bullpen. That will signal the end of the night for Lance McCullers. So McCullers gets one out in the first inning. He gives the Rangers seven hits, and so far six runs, but the two on base are his responsibility. And A.J. Hinch just explaining things to him about how things have to go. So a pitching change underway here. Rangers doing some early damage. We're right back after this on Fox Sports Southwest. Photo to us. You can use hashtag Southwest Data Strong Fan, and you just might see yourself on an upcoming broadcast. That's all brought to you by the good folks at T Mobile. We'll have the selection for tomorrow tonight a little bit later on. Well, Josh Fields has come out of the Astros bullpen to take over. He inherits runners at first and third, still just one out here in the first inning. Six on the board for the Rangers. They lead it six to two. Yeah, I think Buzz, the games and innings tells you all you need to know about the Astros bullpen tonight. Fields is in in the first inning. He's pitched 36 games in 34 innings. So he's a short guy. Generally pitches much later in a ball game. But the way they're structured right now with fires starting tomorrow, they really don't have a long man. They've got six short relievers right now. And they did not anticipate having to use a reliever in the first inning. And Delano to Shields pops it up. Altuve, the second baseman, underneath makes the catch. And Elvis uh, bluffing a move down the line from third, but Delano a little upset about that pop up off of Josh Fields. That is out number two. It brings up Rugnet Odor. Well, even though you've had, you have six runs in already you, as a hitter, you'd love to get that run in from third with one out. Lino got things started with a good at bat, the walk. All fastballs, tough to lay off some of those high fastballs, but he did. Fouled one off, 3 2, worked the walk. Here's Odor, who singled the right field. His first time up this inning, he takes low and outside for ball one. Well, Odor now hitting at 265 as he faces Josh Fields. Fields, pretty much a cutter changeup or cutter. Curveball kind of pitcher. A lot of off speed stuff. There's a change up that floats high and outside. Two balls, no strikes. The average with runners in scoring position for the Rangers has gone up, obviously. 240. It was down in the low 200s. The Rangers have been doing some pretty good work late. There's a good fastball. From Fields. Two and one the count. Rangers as a team have hit 262 
in the last couple of months, and a lot of that work with runners in scoring position. 285 lately. Three and one to Odor. Rudnett keeps this uh, first inning going. Prince Fielder will get another opportunity. Elvis at third. Bobby Wilson at first. And Odor pops it up. Correa, the shortstop, backing out, centers himself underneath it, and makes the catch, and that will do it. But the Rangers put six on the board. They send 11 men to the plate. Six of them score. Jin Su Chu capped it up. We'll come back for the second inning now with the Rangers on top, six to two. Armed Forces Network, broadcasting to U.S. Armed Forces serving around the world on land and on ships at sea. Welcome to all of you and thank you for your service. Now, well, Colby Lewis gave up two in the first and uh, might have been down a little bit, but uh, his teammates said, hey, cheer up, big guy. We've got your back. Put six on the board and Colby now has a four-run lead to work with. Jed Lowry, the switch-hitting short or third baseman, leading things off for the Astros. Hard hit, Moreland to his right. Nice pickup. And Colby covering for out number one. We'll give Colby a little extra time to make his way back to the mound. <laughs> Colby says, thank you, I'll take it. <laughs> Colby celebrated his 36th birthday yesterday. You know, I, would, I would imagine two years ago if you told Colby that he'd be out here on his the day after his 36th birthday supporting uh, the Rangers and, uh, and pitching against the Astros, he would have uh, said, well, we'll see. I've always admired pitchers like Colby. Charlie Huff was another as he got older. But the agility is not quite the same as when they were younger. But it seems no matter what kind of play it is, very seldom do they get beat to first base yeah. covering first base. Yeah, you're you're right. Right. You figure a way to get over there. Yeah. Colby Rasmus, left-handed hitting right fielder, fouls back the first pitch. Rasmus, 13 home runs, 36 driven in. He's enjoyed some success against Colby in his career. Five for 15. Astros still playing without George Springer. They're uh, one of their highly prized young outfielders. He's still on the disabled list. Looks like it's going to be another oh, month or so before the Astros have him back in the lineup. He probably would have caught Chu's home run. <laughs> yeah. Would have jumped about 10 feet in the air. <laughs> Spider-Man. Good chance. 
That was a heartbreaker he took away from Martin earlier in the year, boy. Looked like Martin had a game winner, walk off game winner. Yeah. Springer went up over the wall and caught it. And that's not the only great catch he's made against the Rangers. He's some kind of athlete. One two pitch. Couldn't get Rasmus to go after that back foot slider. Two balls and two strikes. Well, Colby up among the leaders in the American League in a lot of categories. 11 and 4 this year. Fifth time in his career that he's gone double figures and wins. Out of play. Our forward leaderboard tonight will uh, show you one of the categories, the strikeout to walk ratio. How about the single season record for Rangers for the franchise? Uh, Fergie Jenkins, the highest ratio of five. That was in 1974. And Colby down there in four spot. Colby uh, at just over four strikeouts per walk. That's pretty impressive. Pretty impressive company right there. When Anytime you're on a list with Fergie Jenkins and Gaylord Perry and John Burkett, you know it's got to be something pretty impressive. It, it's good. It's a good thing. This one popped up. Beltre over toward the railing, but he's going to run out of room. That's about five rows deep. So Adrian back out to his... Uh, Position yeah, midway between second and third. Rangers in that overshift with Rasmus at the plate. Another 2 2 pitch. Call strike three. Colby took something off, got the strikeout. Two gone. Luis Valbuena coming up. We're going to send it over and Check in with Jim Knox. All right, Buzz, appreciate it. We are opening in the Chin Su Chu corner tonight, and this is a very special place for Mary Dries and her family that came all the way in from Tulsa. Why is that, Mary? Well, it's just a great opportunity to honor our children who were adopted from South Korea, and we are just so thankful to Shin Su Chu and the Rangers for giving us this opportunity. There we go. What's your name, buddy? My name's Shane. Mm -hmm. William. All right, good to have you guys out here. Enjoy the game, Buzz. All right, Nazi. Well, Luis Valbuena unleashed his 20th home run of the year. He got a first pitch up in the zone and just cranked it into the upper home run porch. And it's now a 6-3 Ranger lead. Second home run of the night against Colby Lewis. Valbuena had 19 home runs in his first 64 games. That's the first home run he's hit in 84 at-bats. He was in a 20-plus game drought. But he got the high fastball and he showed how he hit the 19 home runs in the first 64 games, just like that. Now Jason Castro takes low and inside. And into the upper deck. And the Astros can score. They've got the third most runs in the league, most home runs in the big leagues. So they can score quickly. Got the 13th. Highest average in the league. They don't hit for average, but they hit home runs. They strike out a lot. They've struck out 336 times more than Kansas City. <laughs> That's over three times a game more than Kansas City. So they strike out. They don't hit for high average, but they hit home runs. They lead the league in stolen bases by 11, and they've hit into the fewest amount of double plays. One two pitch is fouled off. We'll try it again. I guess you hit into fewer double plays when you strike out more than anybody yeah. else. Yeah, and hit a lot of balls in the air. Hit a lot of do. balls in the air. Yeah. So it adds up to no matter what the score is, you don't feel comfortable till the game's over because they can score. Exactly. One and two to Castro. As you saw, a 221 average. That ball's hit well to right field. Hooking into the corner and is over Chu's head. Plays it off the wall. Castro into second. He will beat the throw, and he has a two-out double. So two quick outs to start this inning. And then Colby gives up the first pitch home run to Valbuena. And Castro then turns. Looked like a slider that didn't break down and in enough. Turned that into a two-bagger. That takes the Astros back to the top of the order for Jose Altuve. 
Altuve began things tonight by singling right back up the middle. Altuve with that single now up over 300. 301. He pops this one up. Elvis Andrews going to take care of it. That will do it. Let the Astros add another run on the board. A run on two hits and one left. After one and a half, Rangers leading 6-3. is brought to you by your Texas Ford dealers. Visit your local Texas Ford dealer to kick off the summer right. Ford is the best in Texas. The Rangers on top, six to three now as uh, they come to bat here in the bottom of the second inning. Prince Fielder, Adrian Beltre, and Mitch Moreland, the first three to do the swinging against Josh Fields, the 29-year-old from uh, Athens, Georgia. Prince Fielder stepping in, had an RBI single in the first inning, and then came around to score himself. One for one this evening. First pitch to him is in at the belt for strike one. Prince with the average now at 331. And still second in the American League, and Miguel Cabrera continues to uh, qualify for the league leadership. Well, Cabrera has been on the disabled list now for the better part of a month. And it looks like he will be out for a few more weeks at least. That's a fair foul. I if that bird can dodge a ground ball. <laughs> we may find out here real quick. Two and one to Prince. Field is having a great year. Three and one, 262 ERA, a 175 opponent's batting average, and 45 strikeouts in 34 innings, but he's never pitched in the first inning. High in the air to left center field. Playable as uh, Carlos Gomez gets over there to make the grab. That is out number one. His fastball must be a little sneaky. It looks tonight. I've seen it higher velocity wise tonight 91 92. But all three hitters he's faced have popped up to shields Odor and fielder a little bit late just a tad late on high fastballs. And generally that tells you then they're not picking it up quite as well as they'd like to. It looks like he has one of those little short arm motions or a little bit of a short arm motion. Mm -hmm. Where you can't see the ball and behind him very well. Here's Adrian. He rams it again up the alley in left center field. That's the thing he did last time. He's going to the wall. I think he's going to settle for two this yeah. time. Look, he's going to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> he had no intention in the world to go into third base, but he deked everybody. Yes, he did. <laughs> if you watched him go around second <laughs> and you were a fan, you're going, oh, no, he's going to third. <laughs> 18th double of the year for the Ranger third baseman. Makes it tough to stop when you go around second like this. Almost a carbon copy of the ball he hit his first time up. Split the gap. I had no trouble getting on top of that fastball. <laughs> he should have gone to third. Yeah. I don't think so. Now here's Mitch Borland. And Mitch had a uh, an RBI single and a run scored in the first. Takes a big slow hook from Josh Field for strike one. Moreland now 55 runs driven in. And the batting average up to 287. Beltrake walking his lead off there at second base. The overshift on. And Mitch going after that off-speed pitch with no success. You see this. You, well, I'm going to stop. <laughs> he uses his arms. Like an airplane putting on the brakes when it hits the ground. See him about two thirds of the way to second base. He dropped that head down like he was going to keep on going. <laughs> he stopped a little quicker than I thought he did. <laughs> well, that was slow motion. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, and two to Morley. Rangers six runs on eight hits. They just have one out here in the second inning. Beltre out there at second. Josh Fields, who originally was a, a Rule 5 draft pick by the Astros from Boston back in the uh, pick in the offseason between 2012 2013 seasons. Fields out of the University of Georgia. Ready for the 0-2 pitch again. Got him swinging. And there's that little extra time you're talking about, able to go up the ladder. And that's after lofting in a couple of off-speed pitches in the at bat. Good high fastball. Good high fastball. But in that at bat, Mitch had some off-speed pitches near the center of the plate. He fouled them off. And after several of those 75 mile an hour pitches, the 94 mile an hour fastball was tough to catch up with. Now with two out, here's Josh Hamilton. Hamilton, the strikeout victim as he faced Lance McCullers in the first. Now facing Josh Fields, the infield again into an overshift. Change up, floats high and outside for ball one. Astros with Altuve on the right side of the infield as the second baseman, the middle man of those three. They don't have him go way out into, into right field with Hamilton up there because Josh runs very well. And he stays at the very back end of the uh, skin portion of the infield. Two and all the count. Josh Fields got uh, the first three men that he came into face and then uh, Adrian Beltre doubled and he got the strike out of Moreland so two outs one on two and one to Hamilton Josh currently hitting at 243 Jason Castro flashing the signs out. Fields ready. Two and two. He's got a good combination. Soft off-speed pitches and high fastballs. Like opponents are hitting 175 against him. Good combination. Fields a low set. And he floats that changeup away. Three balls, two strikes. 
Michael Hamilton trying to continue this second inning against uh, Josh Fields. Shinsu Chu, the Ranger right fielder, in the on deck circle. Beltre looking around, see who is where defensively. The only player close to him is uh, Carlos Correa, the shortstop. Payoff pitch is fouled off to the left. There's Adrian. Pair of extra base hits in the ball game tonight. A triple and a double. Fields again with a 3-2. Say one thing, he doesn't really care if he throws that change up high or not. He, he's hung about eight off-speed pitches, <laughs> but Rangers haven't connected with one yet. Tracker looks like it turned upside down. Yeah. What you would normally think. And another foul ball back. And it's pretty obvious what he's doing. Throw him slow and then throw him hard and high. Crowd on hand tonight have seen uh, pretty much an offensive explosion for both teams. Already had three home runs in this ball game. Two by the Astros, one by the Rangers. Let's see if Josh can add to that total. Three and two with two outs. They popped it up. Around the mound, Correa coming in, along with the, the first baseman, Dalbuena, and Dalbuena makes the call. And the catch. And that'll do it. So Adrian Beltre left stranded after his double. We finished two. Rangers leading six to three. receive a Rangers cowboy hat. That's courtesy of Coca-Cola and Walmart. You don't want to miss out on this must-have a fashion accessory. Shows your Texas pride. Just visit TexasRangers.com or call 972-RANGERS. Mitch Marlin takes care of the uh, pop-up off the bat of Carlos Gomez right in front of the Ranger dugout. One pitch and one away here in the uh, third inning for the Astros. Well, Gomez 0 for 2, and now Colby Lewis will face Carlos Correa. Correa's hit, hit a bolt right down the left field line, and I didn't think there was any way possible that ball was going to stay fair, and it clanged off the foul pole. 
about a third of the way up the foul pole, too. He didn't just hit a little, little tiny thing down there. For Correa, his 13th home run of the year. This is 48th ball game. Extra base hits since June 8th. That's when Correa came to the big leagues. Is leading the American League. 27 of them. Now. J.D. Martinez, Elke Cabrera, Mike Trout, all with 26. Well, they kind of tied him up with that slider. Now, that's, that's the Colby Lewis slider, in case he uh, had not been introduced to it properly before. Hit well to right field. Chu is going back at the track, and he makes the kick. Well, Correa taking it the other way, but he's a long out. Two gone before Preston Tucker steps in. We're going to send it back to Aaron Harding for a Mazda game break. All right, Aaron, thank you. I think that's kind of what the Jays had in mind when they got David Price. <laughs> <laughs> well, things are really getting interesting. Mets are winning big. Washington's losing big. Mets could move into first place. They just swept Washington. Yeah. Watching some of the highlights, boy, it looks like excitement is back in New York and not the Yankees. A little pop up That's off better. Tucker's bat, right off the fist. Colby has a one, two, three inning. He is now set down four straight. After two and a half, Rangers by three. By a score of six to three as we welcome you back to Globe Life Park in Arlington and the Rangers struggles here at home this season have been well documented but they've begun to turn things around particularly on this home stand that Delano De Shields offers this explanation. Pieces are coming together you know in addition to Cole Hamels and some of these other guys I think it's really uh, gave us a boost of confidence and um, you know this is when it gets fun the trade deadlines over with. Um, and then, you know, it's the push the last two months of the season. It's not how you start, it's how you finish. So I think a lot of these guys, uh, they've been in a position like this before. And because so many guys have been in this position before, guys like Delano DeShields haven't been, but they can learn um, from the guys who have. And uh, it's nice to see those young guys taking note of, uh, of their elders who perhaps have just a little bit more seasoning in this situation, guys. <laughs> okay, yeah, thank you. <laughs> That's a delicate way to put it. I like that. Cole Hamels uh, will not pitch 
in this series, but we'll see him on the road uh, in Seattle this weekend. And Delano to Shields grabbing that bat. He would be fourth up in the inning, but a new pitcher on the hill. Now for the uh, Houston Astros, it's tomorrow's starter, who probably is not tomorrow's starter, Mike Fires now. And the first pitch to Chu is fouled away. Fires, as we mentioned, came along with Carlos Gomez in that deal with Milwaukee. Just uh, consummated the last uh, last day of the trading deadline, before the trading deadline. I think in a perfect world, they would have brought Fires in in the first inning so they didn't have to use Josh Fields, but that happened so fast. He was scheduled to pitch tomorrow. There's no way they could get him ready in the first inning. But because they don't have a long man, and because they probably have to use everybody else in their bullpen, they've shuffled the deck, and Fires will pitch probably as long as he can in this game, and they'll reassess and come up with a different plan for tomorrow. Well, as you had mentioned, Tom, they were, the idea that they had was to give everybody a, an extra day's rest by inserting probably, that yeah. sixth man. So. Yeah. Depending on where they are, where that uh, where that thought process started, they may be able to uh, just have fires throw tonight and go back to regular. Yeah, go back to your regular when if, if they're at that spot in the rotation. No, fi a big curveball. Fires is straight over the top with high fastballs and then that 12 to six overhand curveball. Not an easy guy to hit for sure, and definitely not the first time you see him. There'll be all sorts of deception in that delivery. That fastball and that big overhand curveball that he throws and a pretty good straight changeup. So he's a three-pitch pitcher. One out, Elvis Andrews up there now, and he takes strike one. Elvis and a base hit to uh, left field his first time at the plate. Facing Mike Fires, a six-foot, two-inch, 198-pounder. Out of Hollywood, Florida. Now a 30-year-old right-hander. The Astros made some good deadline deals. No doubt about it. Scott Kazmier's pitched twice, hasn't given up a run in two starts. Terrific starting pitcher. Fires is a solid starting pitcher. Gives them depth in their rotation. You know, they've got 21-year-old Lance McCullers who's pitching great. But can he pitch all the way through September and have more innings than he's ever thrown before? This, this is an insurance policy. That is a rocket that almost undresses that, Jed Lowry at third. That's the definition of too hot to handle right there. He kind of olayed the first one Elvis hit, but he had no chance on that one. Another hard hit ball to left field Boy. as Elvis turns around the fastball. That's a swing where kind of hooked that outside fastball to left field. Generally, that's a pitch Elvis would kind of push out toward right field. <laughs> and if you're going to catch that one, you have to catch that off to the side. Yeah. Otherwise, you're going to have a stomach ache. And Lowry used to play in shortstop the last several years where he's got a little more time to uh, adjust to a, a rocket like that. Playing in the third, you don't have very much time. That ball's coming in 100 and five miles an hour or so from 90 feet away. And the other deadline deal, of course, was Carlos Gomez, all-star, gold glove center fielder who hit second in their lineup. Starting pitcher, all-star outfielder, and a very solid starting pitcher in fires. Eh? Three nice additions to their team. Early in the year, Buzz, I think, at least when I looked at the Astros, I wondered if they would be talented enough to stay near the top of the division all season long. And right. I don't know if they were as they were constructed in April and May, but they are now. Look at the deadline deals and then look at the young players they've added. Correa. They haven't even talked about Preston Tucker. He's batting fourth. He's only 24 years old. Yep. Well, they're, they're a different team right now. They were good at the beginning, but they're very solid right now. And they've really shored up the one pitching shortfall that they had. That was a starting pitcher. Mm-hmm. And uh, you bring Fires in, you bring Kazmir in. Now all of a sudden, that's a strength of the team. Wilson drives one deep left center field. It is up the alley and hit well. It is off the wall. Around third, Elvis coming in will score. And Bobby Wilson, two for two, drives in the run. The Rangers lead it seven to three. But Bobby Wilson had two RBI hits in his first start. Everybody said it's a welcome addition 
to the catching rotation to have a solid, savvy, defensive catcher like Bobby Wilson. But all we've seen is him rip the ball. Two hits, two RBIs the first time. A couple more hits today. Another RBI. Got an offensive force, too. Well, Bobby Wilson. Four out of six as a Ranger. First double this year. Came over and had limited uh, duty with the Tampa Bay Rays prior to the Rangers getting him on a, a waiver claim. First blush, he has done a great job. So, uh, Delano to Shields hitting for the third time in this ball game. He's the leadoff man. Rangers have put uh, a run on the board here in the third. Delano has walked and scored and popped out to second. Got Wilson at second base, just one out. Fires up high, two balls, no strikes. Well, Fires made his uh, Major League debut with Milwaukee back in uh, 2011. Up and down for the next couple of years. Had some injury problems in uh, 2013. The last year split time between Nashville, which is the AAA team, and the uh, Brewers. He went 6-5 and five last year. This is high here. Three balls, no strikes. Well, Delano bidding to get aboard for the second time tonight. Rugnet Odor will be next. Three balls and a strike. You know, sometimes watching Delino, we kind of get involved with what he's doing, the numbers and everything, and we forget that uh, he hadn't played very much big league baseball. <laughs> this is this is his fourth month in the big leagues. And uh, if you think back to the start of the year, the end of spring training, the first week of the season or so, watching Delino and his demeanor and what he was working on, you almost had to say, well, now, wait a minute. Is he, is he ever going to be able to, this year, is he able to, ever going to be able to uh, produce for the ball club to be a contributor? And uh, certainly the resounding answer now is yes. Well, he not only doesn't have big league experience, he doesn't have a whole lot of minor league right. experience. He only played double-A ball last year, so... One thing you have to say about the lineup is whether or not it looked like he would have a chance to make the team, what the role would be. He carries himself with confidence, even though he just came from double-A baseball. Baseman, Rugnet Odor. The voice of Global Life Park. <laughs> Chuck Morgan, one of a kind. Boy, he is, he is something. You got a whole generation of folks that are growing up in this ballpark that when they hear Chuck's voice, they want to play play ball. <laughs> Rugged had one out of two tonight. You know, singled in the first inning. The first time up in the first inning. Second time up in the first inning, he popped out. There's that big overhand hook for strike one. Rugged at 264, hitting with Bobby Wilson at second. Delano to Shields at first. Rangers leading 7-3. to three. They have out hit the Astros tonight 10-4. to four. I guess, Buzz, for a starting pitcher like Fires, he's had 21 starts this year, no relief appearances, who just joined a new team, has probably worked out and had some kind of a throwing workout. To be ready to pitch tomorrow, right? And then all of a sudden, be sitting on the bench, probably with sneakers on, watching this game. All of a sudden, you're in the game. That takes, I would say, a mental adjustment, wouldn't it? Yeah, I, I don't. Now they may, they may have suggested, hey, if we, if we run into a problem tonight, come to the ballpark, you know, ready to yeah. work if we need you. But you know, you, you hear something like this. Ah, well, yeah. well, the colors is pitching yeah. so great. He's going sure. seven tonight. I'm not going to need me. I'll just get ready for my start tomorrow. And then all of a sudden, the first inning and things are going south and. They call your name and say, who, me? <laughs> <laughs> Two and one to Odor. That ball's hammered to right field. Rask is playing shallow. It's over his head, and it's going to the wall. 
Wilson scores. Bashir turning it on. He's around third. He will score. Into third with a triple is Odor. And the Rangers lead it 9-3. to three. I'll tell you one thing. That's exactly what you deserve if you play Rudnett Odor that, sh- that shallow in right field. And that's where you would play a soft-hitting right-handed hitter. He's playing him back a second base. That's exactly what you deserve, a two-run extra base hit on a line drive that if you're playing maybe where you should be playing, you have a chance to get Look where he's playing. He's playing him back a second base. You must think a little league hitter's up. They must have some wild stat that says that Odor hits a lot of line drives to shallow right field. Rugnet, a two-run triple, and the Rangers have hung three on the board here in the third. Lead it nine to three. Now with Odor third and still just one out, Prince Fielder up there, and the infield pulled all the way in. That swing, I don't think Prince was really looking at where the infield was. He was trying to gauge the wind, see how far he had to hit it to get up in the jet stream. You know, they, they have... I'm sure scientifically placed their defensive players, but I've never seen a right fielder play Prince right there either. In the center, that is going to fall for a base hit. Odor went back to tag, so the play is relatively close. But Rudet, Rudet scores easily, and Fielder for his second RBI of the night. Another multi hit game. The Rangers have hung 10 on the board, they lead it 10 to 3. Well, that's exactly what you like to see, Buzz. The Rangers had the big first inning. And the Astros, of course, with their power, have scored three runs. Game gets a little close. Long way to go. Tack on those extra runs. Got some arm strength, but that one was a little bit off target. Yep. Ruby got back just in time. Hustles in and scores on that base hit. <laughs> Strikeout to start the inning, but it hasn't gone very well since then. Single, double, walk, triple, single. And the latest off the bat of Prince Fielder, who now has 42 multi-hit games this year. And that is the most in Major League Baseball. Well, that little uh, mini 10-game swoon that uh, Prince was in, that's probably a thing of the past. A 10-3 Ranger lead. Adrian Beltre now with a triple and a double tonight. Uh, fires pitch for strike one. Beltre a two-run triple in the first. A double in the second. Average at 266. You remember Adrian uh, he was with Boston when he had the uh, cycle here at Globe Life Park. Oh, the Astros are a, an innovative team that uses analytics, studies defensive placement, and so there must be something in their analytics that tells them statistically they're favored defensively by playing the right fielder where they're playing them. That's where he's playing everybody. Beltre shoots it to right. He is three for three, and now just a home run shy of the cycle. Well, uh, Fires having a little trouble in this inning. He only has one out. Folks, Dollar Hot Dog Night is a ballpark tradition, as you well know. The next Dollar Hot Dog Night is coming up on Wednesday, August 5th. That would uh, be this Wednesday. Great. Astros will finish things up with the Rangers. Just visit TexasRangers.com or call 972-RANGERS for tickets. Well, Fires, I'm sure... Was saying to himself, I better take a deep breath because no matter how this goes, I'm going to be in there a while tonight. Yeah, I will be out here for. He can throw 60 pitches this inning. He's coming back out for the next inning, too. He's about halfway there. That's 28. (laughs) Mitch Moreland is one for two. And an RBI single and a run scored in the first. Got Fielder at second, Beltre at first. Both of them sink. Rangers have five hits and a walk in this inning. 
One ball and one strike. Rangers have had two walks tonight. They've both gone to Delano to Shields. And they see it seems like that walk has keyed big innings for him. I, I agree. I agree. He's taken to the leadoff spot like he's been there for for five years at the big league level. Perfect guy to lead off the way he the way he can eyeball the pitches. Not afraid to take a strike. And it's close. He generally doesn't swing at it. Yep. It's not in the strike zone. Yeah, I agree. Both those walks, they, they ignited both innings. One and two to Mitch. Definitely the first inning, the leadoff yep. walk. Fires a check of second. And this is high, two and two. Now, Mitch, the average of 286. RBI total now up to 55. And meanwhile, Prince Fielder with a couple more tonight has upped his RBI total to 61. The 2 2 offering. Back in, settling into the very back of that batter's box. Fires reading the signs from Jason Castro. Looper in the right center, that's going to fall for a hit. Fielder being waved around third. The throw goes into third. Fielder scores. Moreland another RBI. Rangers lead at 11 to 3. Already in the third inning, five Rangers have two RBIs. Second ball, Mitch is muscled out in the outfield yep. for an RBI hit. Rangers now 14 hits tonight. Two by Beltre, two by Odor, two by uh, Fielder, two by Moreland, two by Andrews, and two by Wilson. Uh, after the strikeout, there's been six hits and a walk, 33 pitches. This is reminiscent of the first inning that Lance McCullers had. Hamilton to center field. This one playable for Gomez. Makes the catch and Beltre bluffs the move toward third but hangs on. Now Hamilton 0 for 3. And that is the second out here in the third inning. And for the second time this inning, Shin Su Chu will come to the plate. Second time in three innings, and the pitcher is batting around. Three innings into the game, and seven Ranger hitters have hit three times. That's a lot of base runners yep. in three innings. Sure is. Chu, one for two with that two run home run in the first. We'll take you back and let you look at that home run off Lance McCullers. She got that fastball inside and turned on it. His 13th of the year. I think that is 14th of the year. Way inside. One ball and one strike. But you now hitting in an even 240. Got Beltre at second, Marlin at first. Fires with a high set. Two and one.
three balls and a strike. Well, Fires really struggling now. He's just about ready to throw his uh, 40th pitch of this inning. And uh, A.J. Hinch has to feel like his hands are pretty much tied now. Yeah, it's a game like this kind of comes out of nowhere. You know, they've been playing some great baseball. They swept the Angels. Coming here riding high. Got a good plan. Mix in a six starter. Give everybody a rest. Just shows you what can happen in baseball. Within an hour, all those plans are completely turned around. And ball four loads him up. Elvis coming to the plate. Second walk of the inning, third walk of the game. And Elvis, with a pair of singles, steps in. Well, we've been talking about Elvis a lot. If you've watched a lot of our games, it won't be the first time you've heard us talk about Elvis. Has worked all season long, starting in spring training, on driving the ball to left field, not hitting everything to right field. And in a pretty good groove the last week or 10 days doing just that. Two hits today. One of them really hit hard to left field. Ball smashed past Lowry at third base. Hits that first pitch a little bit low for ball one. Elvis face fires as the second hitter of the inning. Singled sharply to left field. Again, almost took the uh, left arm off of Jed Lowry, the third baseman. Came around to score on Bobby Wilson's double. And then the floodgates open. That was a pretty good hack of that. Take a look at the uh, teams with innings of five or more runs this year. The Rangers with seven of them including two tonight. A ball and two strikes. Bases full of Rangers. Five runs across here in the third. And Elvis looking for more. Slowly hit the third. And Lowry on the run throws him out. That will do it again. Rangers send 11 men to the plate. Five of them score. Three are left. We have finished three. It's the Rangers 11 and the Astros three.
Great Chuck Morgan. You know, this is my favorite spot to be here at Globe Life Park. But you got a big weekend that will be coming up in the near future. Tell us about Star Wars weekend, Chuck. Before the big weekend, Jim, I just got to tell you, look out at that scoreboard. It is a beautiful night at this it ballpark. Is. Let's play two. Let's play two. Let's play I don't two. care if this game lasts another seven innings. Lizzie, long, the Rangers are on top. I'm with you. We're, well, what a great night at the ballpark. Star Wars weekend coming up August uh, 14th and 15th, R2-D2. And uh, fireworks on Friday night, Star Wars music. And then on Saturday, we the first 10,000, 14 and older, get Star Wars Rangers-themed T-shirts. That's awesome. So that's coming up what weekend, Chuck? August 14th and 15th, we're playing the Tampa Bay Rays. And it, the way we're playing, I don't know if they'll show up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I agree. I agree. And you know you know what? Who will probably show up are a lot of Ranger fans uh, decked out in their Star Wars uniforms, wouldn't you think? We'll have a lot of Star Wars people like that. Plus, we're going to have some Star Wars characters. So it, it's going to be a big weekend. All right, we'll let you get back to work. Thanks, Chuck. <laughs> now, man, third baseman, Jed Lowry. Ballpark. This is great. <laughs> cap night. Folks wearing their caps. Oh, what a great night. You can't ask for a better night. <laughs> play two. Let's play three. <laughs> Chuck can do the PA and carry on a conversation at the same time. It's great. Well, Evan Gaddis led off the uh, fourth inning with a base hit. Jed Lowry now will face Kobe Lewis. And joining us, as always, here for the uh, middle couple of innings, Mark McLemore. Here's live uh, before and after the ball games. Good to see you, Mac. Uh, Got enough offense for you tonight? So no, far? not enough. Not yet. Not no. Okay. We, we can still, on it. We can still do some more, but this is a good start. Okay. Very good start. Okay. Kind of took the second inning off, but uh, got back on in the third. Base hit for Lowry. Stopping at second is Gaddis. So the the Astros, well, they can swing the bats with uh, the best of them when they get going. Lowry with his first hit tonight joins Gaddis aboard and Colby Rasmus coming up. Here we are up here in our perch. Hey, there we go. Well, these guys, yeah, I mean, they're leading the major leagues in, in home runs, so they yeah. can swing the bats. There's no question about it. I love having 11 runs, but they're not going to go anywhere. They're not just going <laughs> to throw in the towel. It's the fourth inning. Believe me, they're not going to just yeah. uh, lay down and, and just uh, take it. Colby dropping in that uh, slower version of the slider, the curveball, if you will. 0 and 1 to Rasmus, who was called out on strikes his first time up there. Astros uh, three runs on six hits. Out for Colby, his 51st pitch of the night. And as usual, a lot more strikes than balls. 40 strikes, 11 balls tonight for Colby. Maybe not Martin Perez esque from yesterday. And that was ridiculous. That was ridiculous, and this is <laughs> pretty close to being yeah. ridiculous. That I, I, I like that ratio right there. I'll take that. No run support leaders in the American League. Now the Rangers, even though that's that figure uh, is fairly high, they backed off a little bit on Colby for a while. They started off the season scoring a ton of runs for him, like eight and a half a game. Then really backed off, and uh, Colby muddled through. But now they apparently have started to like him again. So Colby getting the benefit of uh, some support. And it's good timing, too, because Colby's uh, pitching consistently well, so he can utilize that run support very effectively, as 11-4 and four would tell you. One and two to Rasmus. Moreland to second for one. The return is not in time. Rasmus still gets down that line pretty well. He beats out the return throw from Elvis. Let the middleman retired on the fielder's choice. One out, runners at the corners. Luis Valbuena coming up. Well, that's a difficult turn when you've got the first baseman going down to short, and then you've got the pitcher coming over to cover, and especially Colby. Got over there. He was there in position. Great play. Great throw by Elvis. Nice throw by Moreland. Colby with the stretch. And Bobby Wilson out there to give the uh, the grizzled veteran a little extra time. <laughs> Speaking of grizzled, Evan Gaddis down there at third. 
What Evan Gaddis this year? He's hit one triple in his career coming into the yeah. to coming into the season, <laughs> and he has seven triples this yeah, year. Seven. With two uh, two months to go, how in the world can you figure that? Now there's talk down in Houston of taking Towels Hill out. He might lead a petition drive to have that reversed. <laughs> I think the triples that he's had, and most of them have gone up on to Towels Hill. Have they? Yeah. He got one against the Rangers down there in that last, uh, last trip he made. Actually, he, it, not in his defense, but he does get around pretty well. I mean, once he gets a, a head of steam going, he moves pretty good. 2-0 the count to Balbuena, who homered his first time, and Colby just missing the outside corner. Three balls, no strikes. Balbuena hitting eighth. He'll be followed by Jason Castro. And ball four. Colby issues his first free pass here this evening. Ace is now loaded for Castro. I think that uh, Balbuena home run kind of stuck in the back, maybe the front of Colby's mind. Well, that's a good place for it right there in that, <laughs> in that situation. Yeah. Two little ground ball double play action here from Castro. Castro doubled sharply into the right field corner his first time up there. One ball, no strikes. And Bobby Wilson can go out and mention something else to Colby. Colby's had a couple of times that he's had to cover first, and well, that'll take a little bit out of you. A warm night here, 92 degrees still. Colby having to use quite a few pitches. He's up, so his next one will be number 60 this evening. A little bit low. Two and nothing. Castro, a 224 average. You need to be careful with him. The base is full, and he can hit the ball out of the ballpark on you. There is a strike. Castro shaking his head. He didn't think so. He must have that fox tracker somewhere where he can see it. Colby sets down the 2 1. Three balls and a strike. Well, Mike Maddox, that uh, left foot up on that top step. I have a feeling that he's going to be making a trip out here to the mound pretty quick. Out of play, that runs the count full. A happy young one. <laughs> and another foul back. <laughs> the agony of defeat yeah. right there. That's okay. Don't give up. You get another one. <laughs> I can't believe I'm going to get away. Prime territory right there. There'll be another one back there. Another 3 2. High in the air to right field into the corner. If it's fair, that is out of here. It is gone. A grand slam home run for Jason Castro. And the Astros getting right back in it here in the fourth inning. It's now the 11 to 7 Rangers. No, he said it all game long. They lead the major leagues in home runs. They can score runs, and it's never over. We're seeing that right now. And Kobe got behind in the count. 
Didn't want to walk anybody with the bases loaded. Had to throw fastballs. He threw him probably four or five straight fastballs. Castro fouled a couple off. And then got one he could handle. So it's back to a four-run game now. And the top of the order, Jose Altuve facing Colby Lewis. Altuve, one out of two. Beltre picks him neatly on the backhand. Two gone. Pretty smooth down there at third. That's the hot corner. And the vacuum over there. Making it look easy. No, two gone. Carlos Gomez up for his third at bat. Hits it hard by Elvis into left center field. And Gomez aboard with a base hit. He felt Gomez would fit in. And as aggressive as he is, I think he's seen four pitches now in this ballgame and three at bats. And Gomez uh, fits right in with Altuve and the rest of them. He goes up there looking for something to hit, and he doesn't have to wait very long. Mike Maddox out to uh, kind of slow things down for Colby. The Rangers are going to get the bullpen going. It's one of those nights for Colby's. Working out there, going with everything he's got, trying to find a combination that works. And so far, the Astros are pretty much right on everything he's throwing up there. They'll figure out a way how to get out of this inning. Won't be easy with this guy hitting. Bill Klein just recalled from uh, AAA yesterday. Tanner Shepherds went on to disable this with that uh, bum left knee, and Klein came back up. Carlos Correa, one for two with a home run. And Correa, a 3.02 average. 13 home runs, 34 driven in. The uh, rookie of the month for June. One ball and one strike. Now one and two. So if you're watching the game from behind the dugout, you've got kids. You can't just casually watch the game. And those little gloves aren't going to help them. You better be ready to stick your hands up and make sure you can't hit them. That's why it's close to the action right there. Right field, Chu got a good breed on the ball and a good break, makes the catch. And that will do it. But Jason Castro puts four on the board with one swing of the bat. Rangers uh, now lead after three and a half, 11 to seven.
the baseball tournament. Action takes place at the uh, Baltimore Lanes in Addison. That's on September the 13th, and all proceeds benefit the Michael Young Family Foundation. Sponsorships are still available. Just call 310-525-3755 for information on how you can get involved. Well, the Rangers come to bat here in the bottom of the fourth inning now, and uh, Bobby Wilson up for his third at bat. He's facing Mike Fires. Fires gave up five runs on six hits in the third inning. Wilson had an RBI double and a run scored in that frame. He is two for two tonight. Fires gets the count even at one and one. Rangers 11 runs on 14 hits in the first three innings. Big slow hook. That just missed the top of the strike zone. Two and one. Fires the 30 year old right hand. Goes to the wide. Popped out of play. Two and two. We talked about Bobby Wilson the other day when he made his Ranger debut on uh, Saturday. 218 Major League games under his belt. He was with the Angels for a period of 2008 through 2012. Diamondbacks last year, the Rays at the start of this year. And now the Rangers. Three and two, so bidding to get aboard to start the Ranger fourth. Top of the order, Delano to Shields will be next. Fires with the payoff pitch. Boy, they're making Fires work. He had to throw over 40 pitches for his one inning. He's thrown six pitches to the first hitter here in the fourth inning. They're looking for him to throw probably 80 to 100 pitches. Hope he gets through five, six, seven innings. <laughs> Brady's going now. He's trying to get through this inning. <laughs> and another foul ball. That's what killed him. He's struggling with his command a little bit, but foul ball after foul yeah. ball after foul ball. Oh, no. Throwing strikes. Yeah. Eighth pitch of the at bat coming up. Right center field. Asmus moving over to his right. One gone. And Delano to Shields now will face fires. The Shields, two walks and three trips to the plate tonight. He has scored two runs. Doing what he does extremely well. Let's have long at bats. Get on base. His on base percentage continuing to climb. Came in at uh, 364. It's up close to 370 again. Takes a strike at the knees. Nothing in one. Here's that big slow breaking ball that just does nibble the top of the strike zone. O2 pitch. Well, I don't know. This is his 21st game in a row that he is uh, batting in the leadoff spot. And he's gone on strikes here as Fires gets into that tantalizing and slow breaking ball. Two gone. Talking about Odor the last time up, Mac, and where the right fielder is playing him. You ever seen a right fielder play that shallow? No, not not on a left-hander. Maybe a right-handed hitter that's, you know, a, a punch and Judy. A punch and Judy guy. That's where they played me all the time. But not <laughs> a left-handed guy. And it doesn't matter how small you are, because when you pull the ball, 
you know, it's going to go a lot farther than you, when you typically hit it the other way. So, yeah, that was kind of surprising. And Odor is not the only one that he's playing that shallow. I think he's still shallow now. He's, yeah. yeah, he's still shallow. He's deeper than he was. But that, that area there, closer to the line than normal and shallower than normal, they must have a statistical chart that tells them it's in their best interest to play him that way. He's not just playing there because that's where he feels like playing. <laughs> Three pieces came off the end of that path. Wow. <laughs> Even the fans noticed that. Yeah. That wasn't a good bat. <laughs> that hit right off the top of the bat, right at the sharp part of where the cup was, and kind of shattered the end of the bat. And the cup runneth over. <laughs> There's still a piece waiting to come off, too. <laughs> See, there's where he was the first time up. Let's see if he's in the same spot. Yeah, a little deeper. A little deeper. He steps deeper. You know, and they've seen Odor. They've seen Odor go into the second deck in yeah. right field in, in Houston. So it's not like they haven't seen him before. So their chart may say that's where they should play him. And maybe over 162 games you come out ahead. But for old timers like us, Matt, we're not used to seeing the right field. <laughs> not used there. to it at all. Well, maybe they say you have to play in there unless you can get a guy in the second deck. <laughs> and you can't play someone over the fence. Yeah. It's one or the other, right? One and two to Rugnet. That's out of play to the left. I hope he hits a line drive to right that he can't quite catch. That would have shown he should have been where he was the first time up, <laughs> even shallower. <laughs> Rugnet with the average at uh, 267 now, two for three tonight. He has driven in a couple now. The RBI total to 36. Castro saying that target low and away. And fires it. Well, for the first time tonight, the Rangers go down in one, two, three fashion. We have finished four. It's the Rangers lead 11 and the Astros 7. Brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. And by Mazda. In every car we make, you'll see why driving matters. Well, Kobe Lewis out to the hill to see if he can't uh, regroup and have a good inning here in the fifth. Preston Tucker, Evan Gaddis, and Jed Lowry, the first three Astros to face him. And Kobe back towards that breaking ball for strike one. Chopper up the middle. That's where Elvis is positioned. 
Oh, nice job by Colby getting Tucker out in front of that pitch. And got the weak ground out, one away. Next will be Evan Gaddis. Gaddis one for two, struck out in the first inning. Single leading off the fourth inning. Average up to 249. Colby pours in strike one. Gaddis brought in as a, uh, a middle-of-the-order hitter for the Astros this year. They needed some power, some consistent power in the middle of that order. He went out and got Gaddis. After the start, he got off to uh, Astros were kind of wondering. Gaddis struck out like 13 of his first 16 times up. He caught, uh, caught on pretty well, and he's produced the most RBI on the club now. Go back since the tail end of April, the last week of April. Gaddis has had 58 of his 59 RBI in that, uh, in that streak. He knocked in one run then in his first 17 games. Yep. Wow. Pretty well to left field. Hamilton retreating. Josh is there. Two long. No Gaddis flies out. Now Jed Lowry. Lowry one out of two. He had a single his last time up. Just back off the uh, disabled list. He had a torn ligament in his right thumb that uh, caused him to miss about two months. Colby we'll trying to work a little too fast for, uh, for Lowry's taste. One ball, one strike. Now two and one. Now there's been some speculation that had Lowry not been injured, that uh, Carlos Correa would still be playing in the minor leagues, or at least would have been the first full half of the season. Yeah, that's interesting. But uh, with Lowry getting hurt, it uh, opened the opened the door and. Uh, I don't think the Astros are upset about that at all. Lowry with his second hit of the night, a two-out single has him aboard for Colby Rasmus. Oh, not a bad pitch. Sinking fastball tailing away. Hit it right off the end of the bat. Found a hole, though. The Astros, nine hits now to go along with their seven runs. Colby Rasmus 0 for 2, a strikeout, and a fielder's choice. And he hit it off the end of the bat towards center. Easy play for Delano to Shields. And that'll do it. So Colby gives up a harmless two-out single. He strands a runner. We played half the ball game. Rangers leading 11 to 7.
Fans and fans will be treated to a Medical Center Arlington Adrian Beltre bobblehead. Join us to see the Rangers take on the Rays that afternoon and get your collectible bobblehead. Visit TexasRangers.com or call 972 Rangers for your tickets. Prince Fielder leading off here in the uh, Ranger fifth inning. Fielder two for three tonight, a pair of RBI singles and two runs scored. Prince now 42 multiple hit games this year. Puts it in the air to left center field. Gomez retreating. He stops just shy of the warning track. One gone. That was high enough where the wind coming in affected that one. Prince gave it a pretty good ride, but not quite far enough. One gone. Beltre coming up. Let's send it over to Aaron Hardigan for a Mazda game break. All right, Aaron, thank you. Beltre, a deep drive to left. He has done it the cycle for Adrian Beltre. In five innings. Oh, wow. The cycle in five <laughs> innings. And tell me he wasn't trying for that one. That's unbelievable. <laughs> Beltre with his ninth home run of the year on a first pitch. He was sitting... Fourth player in Major League history to hit for the cycle three times, three in this ballpark. He doesn't mind Elvis hanging on him, grabbing his back, but if he touches his head, he goes bonkers. <laughs> My goodness. That's great. Four consecutive at bats. Triple, double, single home run. The last, last two or three days. <laughs> that one got out of here in a hurry. Yeah, it did. Watch out if Adrian's back. I hope that thumb's feeling better. Sure looks like it tonight. Nice. Oh, I thought he caught that ball. I was going to say, the last three days before stretching, Adrian is out in right field pitching to his little boy and Prince's kids. And he might be taking his tips from those kids. Those kids were ripping them into the stands today behind second base. Which pulls it foul. Now Adrian one cycle as a member of the Mariners in this ballpark and then two as a member of the Rangers. <laughs> He's got Something time else. to hit for another cycle. He does. There's only five innings. Yeah. Wow. Moreland cutting through that high fastball, and he was gone. Out number two, it'll bring up Josh Hamilton. I think what's really impressive is the fourth player to ever hit three cycles. Yeah. Wow. That's, you know, that's kind of amazing. It is. And if that's the case, well, they're going to do some research on it. If that's the case, he may be the only one to hit all three in the same ballpark. That is a safe bet. I don't know. You know it, it just depends on what the other guys did. I just noticed another difference, Buzz, from when we were playing. He reached into the cooler. Instead of popping out a soft drink, he popped out a coconut water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did they have coconut water? I don't think they had it. The first yeah, time I had coconut water was in Venezuela. And we'd go on a road trip and stop at a sideway, a side uh, restaurant on the side of the street. And they'd have pork sandwiches. They have a huge pig on a rotisserie. And they cut the cut the pork off and give you a sandwich. And if you wanted a drink, you could get a coconut. And they'd take a machete and chop off the top of the coconut and stick a straw in it. And you drink the water right out of the coconut. There you go. But never saw it in the bottle, that's for sure. Call strike three. Josh got looking, and that'll do it. But Adrian Beltre completes the cycle with his ninth home run of the year.
Rangers now lead at 12 to 7 after 5. Back then, join us. We'll see you after the ball game on Rangers Live. Is a five-run lead now, and Elvis, Elvis trying to uh, get under his cap a little bit. There you go, Just trying to salute you. <laughs> Elvis would have no problem <laughs> saluting the fans if he hits for the cycle. He's already got it shown out, showing Adrian how to do it. Adrian's had some experience doing it though. <laughs> Luis Valbuena starting off the sixth inning against Colby Lewis. Colby had a very quick inning in the fifth. Good to see. He's now up to 86 pitches for the night. And Valbuena, a check swing. He did not go around. Lose the count to two balls and a strike. Valbuena, a home run and a walk tonight. 20th home run of the year for Valbuena back in the second. Valbuena already now has a career high in home runs, but he's hit four more than he hit in 100 and almost 150 games last year with the Cubs. He's gone completely crazy. Rips this one oh. over oh. the leap of Ruth Dan O'Dor. Almost got a chance to look at the shift in action right there. O'Dor kind of with a wry smile on his face. Yeah, I almost got you. Well, if it, was D, if it was D.J. LeMayhew playing second base out there, he might have caught That's it. True. He's about 6'4". No, ten hits now for Houston. One on, nobody out. Jason Castro. He hit the grand slam in the fourth inning. Next strike one. Castro a double in that grand slam home run. Now 10 home runs and uh, 29 runs driven in. Keep it out there. Yep. Nail on that outside corner. Nothing in two. Bobby Wilson flashing the signs out. Colby ready to go. Got him swing. Good back foot breaking ball. And slider down and in. And uh, Colby getting that together pretty well. That's just his third strikeout tonight. But his first since the second inning. Yeah, good combination. Two fastballs away and a hard breaking ball down and in. You see how Colby grips it, how he lets go of it, and there's the spin. A one out. Here's Altuve for his fourth at bat of the night. He is one for three. Takes that slider for strike one. Altuve singled to start the game off. Astros put two on the board in the first as Carlos Correa hit the home run with Altuve aboard. 
Colby. A little quicker move to home plate, and it looked like it messed up Altuve more than did the base runner. Yeah, two fastballs right down the middle for Altuve. He's generally not the kind of hitter who's going to take those two pitches. I'm betting he doesn't see another one. And he got that slider and just able to get a piece of it. Altuve, along with a single, has popped out to short and grounded to third. He was picked very uh, smoothly by Adrian Beltre his last time up. Altuve, the all star second baseman for the Astros, just turned 25 years of age. To right field, Chu, as this one measured. Two gone. Next to be Carlos Gomez. Oh, El, El Tuve popped it up, filled the middle of the plate with strikes, and El Tuve ended up with a pop up to right field. <laughs> Conveniently unwild. That's very commonplace. Yep. And Carlos Gomez swings, the helmet comes off. It's a violent swing. And the head tips, and down comes the helmet. It's been suggested to him by several opposing pitchers that he get a, a chin strap for that. I thing. think someone I think someone did that to him on the other team. Yeah. They put a helmet on with a chin strap and called his name. He looked over and laughed. <laughs> I saw that on the, I remember, on the highlight. I remember hearing I can't remember that. who it was. 0 oh 2 in this at bat. Elvis to the backhand, pitch it right off the turf, and that will do it. Well, again, just a harmless single in the inning. Colby is through five and a half. Rangers leading at 12 to 7 on Fox Sports Southwest. is $100 and dinner for two at Sonic Drive-In. If a Ranger hits a home run during this inning, Rob Hammerstrom from Flower Mound, Texas will win $100. And if a Ranger hits a grand slam this inning, Rob is going to take home $25,000. You can register at any participating Sonic or restaurant. Jinsu Chu starting off the Rangers sixth inning. And Mike Fires feels that off-speed breaking ball that Chu fouls off. Nothing and two. Chew a home run, a walk, and a strikeout tonight. One for two. Rangers 12 runs on 15 hits. 
Talking about Adrian Beltre getting the cycle tonight, and Shinsu Chu had one a couple weeks ago in uh, Colorado. Like that against the Rockies. Rangers, oddly enough, Rangers have six cycles to their credit since uh, 2009. That's by far the most in Major League Baseball. Seems like after Odeby had one way back when, there weren't yeah. that many of them right. for a while. Breaking ball is low, and the count is full to Chu. Yeah, six, six cycles for the Rangers. Closest, next closest team is three. Huh. That's uh, kind of an anomaly. Last team to have two in a year, the way the Rangers had this year, the Diamondbacks, back in 2012. And that question we were asking about, Adrian, about whether anybody else had hit all their cycles in the same park? The question is no. No. The answer is no. That Adrian's the only one to have all three cycles in the same ballpark. No, Chu strikes out uh, before Elvis steps in. Let's check in with Emily Jones. Well, guys, as you have talked about over the last couple of weeks, Elvis Andrews has been much improved at the plate and in the field. And when we talked to him about his. Uh, plate effectiveness of late. He actually credits Josh Hamilton and being able to use his bats for his production lately. Well, because it's that heavy, it makes me don't try to swing hard. Just, you know, be on time and, and, and just throw the, you know, the bottle to the ball. And, uh, you know, every time I do that, the ball actually is jumping really good from the bat. So I think that is you know, one mindset. I, I kind of start using heavy bat this year. I use Adrian too for a little bit and you can see a difference. Uh, actually, I'm trying to do less when I got a head of this. He said they were actually having a conversation, he and Josh, during batting practice when this homestand began. Josh told him, hey, go pick up one of my bats and, and see what it does. And he uses a 35-32, Josh does, which is a lot bigger than what Elvis uses. But he says he's going to start ordering the bigger bat since it's been working so well. Thanks. Yeah, very interesting. Yeah, huh? thanks for that, Jim. I don't see uh, See many guys going to heavier. A lot, most of them go lighter. You know, the funny thing is, if you were just watching the swings before and his swing now, you'd think he went to a lighter yeah. bat. Yeah, yeah. You know, his mechanics are such now that his bat looks much quicker. So you combine it with a bigger bat with better mechanics and stands to reason the ball would jump better. Bobby Wilson at the plate, two for three tonight. Overall season average at 194. And fires missing outside, two and one. Wilson, you remember, uh, as he came from Tampa Bay to the Rangers, was hitting 145 at the big league level. He'd spent most of the season at uh, AAA for Tampa Bay. He came over, and Robinson Chirinos immediately went on the disabled list with that bad thumb or shoulder. Wilson reaches out and pokes one down the line, but foul. Two and two now. So Jeff Bannister, at the moment anyway, alternating Chris Jimenez and Bobby Wilson to see if he can get an idea about the right uh, right combination, pitchers, catchers, how uh, they each handle the situations. There's a rocket right down to Lowry at third and across the diamond. And that'll do it. Well, the Rangers retired in order. We have finished six here at Globe by Park. Rangers leading by five.
three cycle. Well, Adrian Beltre has it. How about a two run triple in the first inning? Adrian all the way over. In the second inning, almost an identical shot, and Adrian stopping at second after thinking about third. In the third inning, the other way for the single. So a home run shy, and the next time up in the fifth, there it is. Adrian Belfry, his third career cycle, just the fourth player ever to have three in a career, and the first player ever to hit all three in the same ballpark. He stopped at second because he sensed he might have a shot at the cycle. That's a veteran move right there. <laughs> that is a veteran. <laughs> that's a real veteran move. <laughs> if you can go with that, boy, that's... <laughs> and I wouldn't put it past him. You felt that was, uh, that was coming. Well, Colby Lewis's night is finished. Rangers uh, provided a dozen runs for him this evening. He gave up seven and with ten hits, but he leads uh, by five, and uh, Spencer Patton now will take over here in the seventh inning. Yeah, he, Kobe was on the ropes in the fourth inning. It didn't look good after the grand slam. Gomez had a single, but he pitched out of the fourth and then had two shutout innings. So even though the overall line won't look great, added those two innings, saved the bullpen a couple of innings and pitched six innings on a night where he battled all the way, gave up some runs, but in a position to get a win if the Rangers can hang on. And uh, the first player that Patton faces, Carlos Correa. It's a pitch up and jams it to center, but right there is Delano to Shields for out number one. Oh, Correa now one for four with that uh, first inning home run. Patton appearing in his 18th ball game. Last time we saw Spencer was in the New York series in the 28th. That was the uh, second game of that series. Worked an inning, gave up three runs to the Yankees. We talked about the Astros leading the major leagues in home runs. Well, they hit three today, and that accounts for all seven of their runs. A two-run shot by Correa, a solo shot by Valbuena, and a grand slam by Castro. Foul back. One ball, one strike. Yeah, they're now up to 151 for the year. Oh, he's definitely on pace to hit a couple hundred home runs or more. Patton back to the plate. And, uh, the check swing by Preston Tucker. Two and one. I think what's surprising, Tom, that this the ball club, uh, the Astro Club, doesn't get on base with the kind of frequency where you would think they would be third in the league in runs scored. But when they do get on base, apparently the home run follows pretty home quickly. Home runs make a difference, boy. <laughs> you know, and the other, we talked about it earlier. The other thing, they steal a lot of bases. They're in first place by 11 stolen bases. So when they don't hit a home run to drive in a run, they can move guys around and get that's a fair ball. They have that in sure scoring is. position. Right down the third baseline, and Tucker just reaching out and poking it right over the bag. And we saw a third base umpire. Manny Gonzalez have to jump, and then when he came down, made the call up there. Well, Preston Tucker with the double right down the chalk. That ball's tailing well out of the strike zone. Tucker doesn't walk very much. He's a free swinger. A lot of movement on that tailing fastball. He's able to get the end of the bat on it. Manny Gonzalez, the third base umpire, jumped over it, and it goes for a double. Now that is the 11th Astro hit tonight. Yeah, Tucker at second base. Evan Gaddis has one of those 11 hits. A fourth inning single. He also scored a run in that frame. One for three tonight. And Patton gets the inside corner for strike one. Gaddis at 248 for the year. 17 home runs, 59 driven in. Nothing in two. You know, Tom, we were talking the other night about uh, pitchers coming over from the National League to the American or, or vice versa and, and hitters coming over. We seem to feel that you know, hitters wouldn't have that big an adjustment to make. Gaddis caught looking at that. 
That has certainly had a big adjustment to make. He, 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 he looked absolutely lost when we faced him in April. Yep. Um, but you know he's got a track record. He wasn't quite ready for that fastball. Caught the inside corner. But as you mentioned, what did you say? 50, 58 is 59? Yeah, it comes since yeah. the end of April. So he's doing what the Astros got him to do. Yeah. Provide power in the middle of the lineup. It was a slow start. It was an adjustment. But, boy, he's made up for it. Oh, two outs with Tucker still at second base. Here's Jed Lowry. And the switch hitting third baseman takes strike one. Lowry, a couple of singles tonight in three trips. Got that batting average up to 297. Mitchell Lowry going out of uh, the lineup for the Astros with that torn ligament in his right thumb. That happened uh, early in the season. Foul back. When he left the Astros lineup, he was uh, leading the club in on base percentage, on base plus slugging, and run scored. So it wasn't just matter of losing uh, the shortstop that he was contributing mightily offensively as well. One two. Patton okay is the sign the right hander check second. And that runs account full. The Lowry hitting sixth in the order to be followed by the right fielder, Colby Rasmus. Patton with the payoff pitch on the way. Lost him. Two on, two out for Rasmus. Right fielder, Colby Rasmus. You need to be careful. I mean, Mike Maddox knows as well as anybody that uh, Rasmus may not uh, knock your eyes out of your head with uh, the statistics as far as his batting average, but he can hit home runs with the best of them. Yeah, that's one thing you don't want to do against the Astros is walk anybody with extra men on base because most of the guys in the lineup can hit a home run. Rasmus has 13 of them. And fairly limited limited play. They've all come against right-handed pitchers. And Mike Maddox uh, going out to the mound. Going to have a little uh, chat with uh, Spencer Patton and Bobby Wilson. Elvis Andrews will come in to join. And it also gives the bullpen a little opportunity to get up and start loosening. Now the bottom of this uh, Astro order, left-handed heavy with Rasmus, Valbuena, and Castro. The last three hitters, all left-handed. Well, Mike, making sure that everybody has their signal straight as to what they want to do with uh, Colby Rasmus. Paul Schreiber, the home plate umpire, to go out there and throw in his two cents worth. Now we're set to go. Rasmus 0 for 3 tonight. Sam Freeman, Ranger left-hander, getting loose in the bullpen. Rasmus a strikeout, a ground out, and now a throw to second by Bobby Wilson, but back in plenty of time with Preston Tucker. Rasmus also had a fly out to center field. That was his last time up. Rangers in a overshift on the infield. Adrian Beltre, the only Ranger on the left side of the diamond. Elvis playing right behind the bag. Two balls, no strikes. Well, the only 
walk that Colby Lewis gave up was in the fourth inning, and that preceded the grand slam home run by Castro. That's Venture Patton now falling behind three balls and no strikes with Valbuena waiting in the on-deck circle. Well, you know, Spencer is working as hard as he can to throw a strike. He does not want to walk, guys. And he knows as well as anybody that the last thing you want to do with a five-run lead is to walk people. He's having a hard time hitting that outside corner. Hitting well to right field. Chu is pulling up. That ball's off the wall. Coming in to score is Tucker. Around third, here comes the throw in. Not in time as Jed Lowry scores from first. Now Rasmus going to third, he's safe under the tag of Adrian Beltre. A two-run double by Rasmus. It's now a 12-9 Ranger lead. And so in addition to the, to the walk, you don't want to walk anybody. When you do get behind and can't walk somebody, then you have to come in with a fastball, and then a guy like Rasmus becomes a much better hitter. He doesn't hit for average, but against a right-handed pitcher, when he has to throw a fastball for a strike, he's obviously a much better hitter. So a double credited to Rasmus. He advances the third on the throw into the plate. And that tag not quite in time to get Rasmus. And Jeff Bannister out to the mound. That's going to do it for Spencer Patton. Bannister wants to have the left-hander, Sam Freeman, come on to face Luis Valbuena. So a pitching change underway here at Globe Life Park. 12 to 9. The Rangers are on top. We're back right after this. Upper box, Lexus Club Terrace, and lower reserve sections are half price when you purchase online thanks to Ozarka. Tomorrow's a perfect time to take advantage of this offer. Rangers continue this series against the Astros. You can get your tickets online at TexasRangers.com slash specials. And you use the online coupon code Ozarka. Get those great deals. Sam Freeman has entered the ball game now. He inherits Colby Rasmus at third with two outs. Freeman appearing in his uh, 38th ball game of the year. 226 opponents average. Last time we saw Sam was uh, on Saturday against the Giants. Worked uh, two-thirds of an inning in relief, giving up a run. And he deals outside to Valbuena. One ball and no strikes. Valbuena is two for two. A home run, a single, and a walk. He has scored two runs. Been a scoring change on that uh, Colby Rasmus play. It's still a double with two runs driven in. The error is charged on the play to Bobby Wilson to allow Rasmus to go from second to third. 
So the first error of the ball game has been assessed. Two balls, no strikes. And the changeup floats in, two and one. Sam Freeman, one of those left-handed pitchers that has a distinct reverse uh, split. In other words, left-handed hitters are much more successful against them than our right-handed hitters. Freeman's getting up a uh, 298 average to left-handers, just a 152 average to right-handers. Probably why they didn't pinch it for Val Buena. Right behind the bag, it's a foul ball. And Mitch would have had the easy play stepping on the bag, but we'll come back and try it at two balls, two strikes. Looks fair. Boy, it must have taken it. It did. A turn toward the foul line. It was fair all the way down mm -hmm. until that last bounce. Fielding Colbreth right there making the call. That's well, a two ball, two strike count. Freeman set to work. Fly ball to left field. Hamilton coming hard, slides, makes the catch. Nice play by Josh. Looked like he had that measured all the way. Freeman did that a little slide and picked it off the top of the turf. Two runs, two hits, one left. We'll take the seventh inning stretch in Globe Life Park in Arlington. 12 to 9, Rangers leading. At bat, the number one app for live baseball. At bat is up to the moment at any moment with in game highlights, live look ins, replay reviews, radio broadcasts, stat casts, and a lot more. Get MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or tablet. Black Fire is going to work here in the bottom of the seventh inning, and the top of the Ranger order means the liner to Shields, who has walked twice, popped out, and struck out tonight. Inside, almost hitting. One ball, one strike. Both times uh, DeShields has gotten on base, he has scored. Rangers 12 runs on 15 hits. The uh, Astros not dying, not going away. Nine runs on 12 hits. Two balls and a strike. Fires now in relief. On since the uh, third inning tonight. 87 pitches under his belt. The 2 1 pitch. 3 and 1. Galeno trying to start an inning off one more time by getting aboard. He'll be followed by Rugnet Odor. Pop foul. And the uh, wind will push that back into the seats. 
walk out. Oh, the fire's working. Uh, his fifth inning here tonight. I, I can almost guarantee he's not going to be tomorrow night's starter. <laughs> <laughs> you going to go out on a limb? Yeah, I'm going to go out on a limb. Can you imagine what his agent would do if he came back and tried to start tomorrow? Tell you, what, you, might, you might see it in the College World Series, though. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Now the right-hander with a payoff pitch. Outside, ball four. Third walk of the night for Delano DeShee. You can't say enough about the job he's doing in the leadoff role. First two times he walked, he scored. Pretty good chance that's going to happen this inning, too. I remember a game Matt Williams was pitching at Rice in the Southwest Conference Tournament. And I forget who he was pitching against, but he pitched 12 innings. And I believe the game was tied at the end of 12 innings. It was called. They continued it the next day, and he came back and pitched the next <laughs> pitch, started the game the next day. Wow. Odor, a couple of hits tonight. And he goes after the first pitch and pops it up. Correa, the shortstop, handles that for out number one. Now, before Prince Fielder comes up, let's send it over to Aaron Hardigan of Monster Game Break. All right, Aaron, thank you. That ball game's not over either. <laughs> In that ballpark. You know, Brent Strom on his way out to the mound and uh, talking to Mike Fires about Prince Fielder. Well, the wild card becoming a very important part now for the uh, race for the next two months. And Tampa is tied up with Chicago in their game tonight, 4-4 in the eighth inning. With Baltimore and Toronto. Baltimore a half game behind Toronto. Toronto and Minnesota ostensibly tied for that uh, second wild card spot. Rangers down there two and a half games behind. Well, it is getting closer and closer. There's a, about seven teams that are going to be within shouting distance of that. But, uh, and the Angels, the way they're playing, having lost six straight. They're playing themselves right back in the middle of that thing, too. Yeah, no kidding. They're getting shut out. They're going a hard time scoring right now. Rotations a little bit in flux. Wilson's on with disabled this. Well, Prince Fielder tonight, another multiple hit game. His 42nd of the year. Two singles, two runs driven in, two runs scored. You got the, the Shields at first. Getting a pretty good lead. And Fires working on him over there. And the line got picked off here. The bump, the bump got him in the first inning. I don't remember. Was a right-hander, was it? Kalino tried to get a good lead. Chris Heston. That's sure. right. Yeah. Yeah. Chris Heston that, uh, threw over there, almost got him twice, and then got him on the on the third one. He was working on Mike Fires here. Fires doesn't alter his delivery a little bit. It doesn't matter what he kind of a throw he makes over there. The Lionel's going to shorten up his lead about a step. And yeah, a slide step doesn't really help. Well, it helps him a little bit, but with all the motion yeah. he's got with his arms, that still takes some time. One ball, no strikes to Prince. Out of play down the left side. And yeah, that'll even the count. Pitches. 
in the ball game since the third inning. There goes the Shields. The pitch is a strike. The throw is not nearly in time. And Delano with his 17th stolen base of the year in that second safety. how many steps he got while Fires was still delivering the ball to the plate. Didn't give Castro enough time to make a throw and get him. No. Nope. Made a strong throw, but no contest. See, Delano wearing that uh, mitt on that left yeah, hand. Good idea. Sliding glove. Cover those fingers up. Keep that thumb from being exposed. Up the middle, softly to Correa. So that allowed the Shields to go on to third. Fielder is thrown out, two gone with uh, the Shields at third base for Adrian Beltre. Beltre already with the uh, cycle line. There's the maybe a Beltre inspired sliding glove. Adrian never tore his thumb uh, sliding into second base. A couple more notes on Adrian's cycle tonight. He's the first player since uh, Melvin Upton Jr., BJ Upton, used to be. Back in 2009, to complete the cycle in the five in the first five innings of a game, talked about Adrian being one of four now to uh, have hit three cycles in his career. One John Riley was back before the modern era, back uh, before 1900. Bob Musell and uh, Babe Herman also had three cycles. And Adrian pops up the first pitch. Altuve, waving his arms, makes the catch. That will do it. The Rangers get a leadoff walk, a stolen base, but strand one. We're going to the eighth inning. The Rangers 12, the Astros 9. As a fan, they, and we got a lot of good candidates tonight. We got Rihanna in from England. How you doing? I'm good, thanks. Brilliant game, go Rangers! Here we go. Good day, mate. To you. Also, this is James and Donna celebrating their 30th wedding anniversary. Happy anniversary! Great sign. But the best sign is by Chase. Comes in from Lindell, Texas. Hey, Noxie, it's my first game. Come see me. You've had a great time. I hear you cheering all game long. Here's the bag. Congratulations, Chase. Hope you had a blast. I know you did. Anything you'd like to say, buddy? Happy birthday, Mimo, and go Rangers! Oh, happy birthday, go Rangers! There you go, Chase. He wasn't sure what order he wanted to put that in, but he knew what he wanted to say. Hope Mimo's watching. <laughs> Top of the eighth inning, Sam Freeman back out to the hill. He's facing Jason Castro. Castro two for three tonight. Freeman came on to get the final out in the seventh inning. That Valbuena to line out to left field. And Castro takes one the other way. Hamilton backing up with room. And one away. Well, Castro two for four. New center fielder for the Rangers. Becoming a common occurrence when the, the shield starts in center. 
Theodos Martin taking over here in the eighth inning. Yeah, and I guess we should maybe add that it, in Jeff Bannister's mind, it doesn't have anything to do with the Lionel being a poor center fielder. It's just Leonis Martin, in his mind, is one of the better center fielders, has very good range, and he has that big arm that if it ever is needed, he's got it out there. Well, Sam Freeman got his uh, work in, so he's going to be removed, and Sam Dyson is coming out of the bullpen. We'll tell you all about Sam when we come back. A timeout here in Arlington. Rangers on top by three. Use hashtag Southwest Data Strong Fan. The photo will go into the hopper and it might be selected to be aired in one of our upcoming broadcasts. Again, all the folks at uh, T Mobile, we appreciate what you do to make all that possible. Well, Sam Dyson, right hander off the second day in a row. Dyson got his first career save in yesterday's ball game. At the final two outs, that huge double play ground ball from Hunter Pence. And he's dealing here. To the top of the order, Jose Altuve. Came in a, well, a crucial situation. He got a couple of ground balls. One of them turned into the game-ending double play. A lot of great comments about his uh, about the the heavy sinker mm -hmm. that Dyson throws. Hunter Pence said that when he talked about his yep. at bat. Said, I know what he throws. He just beat me. He got the ball in on his fist. And that pitch back to the screen on the foul ball. It's just not comfortable facing a guy with a 96 mile an hour hard sinker. Right hand hitter knows it's coming in toward him. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. sometimes there's not much you like Hunter Pence. He knew what, he knew what was coming. Yeah, the question is, what can you do about yeah, exactly. it? Exactly. <laughs> he knew what he knew what he tried to do. Ninety-seven is uh, Sam went for a, a little extra octane. Two balls and two strikes to Altuve. Altuve won for four tonight. A first inning single. Since then, has popped out, flied out, and grounded out. Dyson ready. Swinging. Well, that is some nasty stuff. Not easy to strike Altuve out. Altuve been up 400 times, only struck out 42 times, and then to make him look like that—that's pretty good indication that that's a quality sinker you're looking at right there. As word about Dyson gets around the American League. He's going to have more and more people checking baseballs and see if there's a scuff or something. <laughs> you know, a ball just naturally shouldn't do that. 
but it does. Carlos Gomez is one for four tonight, singled back in the fourth inning. Two seventy-eight, the average for Gomez. There is strike two, ninety-eight. And just getting loose. Sam played his collegiate ball at uh, the University of South Carolina. He was a freshman All-American there in two thousand eight. Oh, two pitch, grounded to the right side, off of the glove of Moreland into right field, a base hit. Well, credit Gomez for getting a pitch that he could get the better part of the bat on and not beat it into the ground. And Moreland made a great effort at it. He just couldn't come up with a hot shot. the 13th Houston Astro hit tonight. They still trail by three runs. One on, two out. Carlos Correa is one for four. It is 13th home run of the year back in the first inning. One ball, no strikes. And that looked like it almost got a piece of his wrist coming up. Dyson a check of first. One ball, one strike. See the sinking action on that pitch. Reyes swung right over the top of it. In this kind of a situation, kind of pitcher you want in there. Keep the ball down, keep the ball in the ballpark against a team that likes to use the long ball. Tough to hit that pitch out of. You hit that pitch out of the ballpark, you belong in a different league. Yeah, you sure do. Might have to go in and read the specimen and some of the stuff, too. Yeah, and, and even if you have to do that, I don't know how you can make good, good enough contact to hit it out anyway. <laughs> you might have the strength, but I don't know how you're going to make the contact. Yeah. One two pitch coming. Uh, Gomez on the move, and Beltre will take care of that hopper across to Moreland, and that'll do it. A two out single, no damage. We'll go to the bottom of the eighth inning. It's the Rangers 12 and the Astros 9.
to nine lead over the Houston Astros. This is the opener of a three game set between these two teams. Game two tomorrow night right here on Fox Sports Southwest. Same time with a seven o'clock first pitch. Here's a look at some of the numbers headed into this one. Carlos Correa, we've seen what he can do. Also, Shinsu Chu tonight. There you see their numbers as of late. Correa, five home runs in his last eight games. And Chu with that 366 average in 12 games since the All-Star break. Thanks so much to the fine folks at AT&T U-verse for getting us ready for game two tomorrow here on Fox Sports Southwest, guys. All right, and thank you. Well, we head to the uh, bottom of the eighth inning. Chad Qualls has come out of the bullpen, the 36-year-old right-handed veteran for the Astros, and he'll face Mitch Moreland to start things off. And the pitch inside, ball one. And Mike fires five innings of work tonight, seven hits, six earned runs allowed, three walks, six strikeouts. Moreland is two for four. And chops that one down to the uh, first base coach, Nick Cortez, for the right. Is that the, making some friends there, about six rows up. Moreland, a pair of singles, a pair of runs driven in tonight. Also a pair of strikeouts. 287 the average, 56 RBI now for the Ranger first baseman. Balls back to the plate. And this is low. And the count is three and one. Orland just 0 for 1 against Qualls. Not that many at bats against him. Pretty good hitters count here, though, for Mitch. Popped him up. Into foul territory. Third baseman, uh, Ted Lowry, near the coach's box, makes it. And that is out number one. Josh Hamilton will be next. We're going to check in with Jim Knight. All right, Buzz, real quick. How about the uh, luckiest and the nicest fan tonight? This is Wendell. He comes to the game from Gatesville along with his family. You caught Adrian Beltre's home run ball. That that was the cycle right there. Yeah, that's all he needed. What happened after that, Wendell? Uh, they come and got me and uh, asked Beltre how the ball back, and I was willing to give it to him. That's and right. Augie was very generous with Couple Nolan Ryan balls, Beltre, a Beltre bat, Nolan Ryan ball. Wow. Very good. Very, good. very, very nice. nice. And also, Augie got to fly in Willie Nelson in for the night, and uh, he got to sit in the back of the stands <laughs> with Wendell. Very nice job, Augie. Very nice. All right. Wendell, congratulations, buddy. Thank you, brother. All right. There you go. Very nice. <laughs> Everybody's happy. Josh Hamilton takes the pitch low. One ball and one strike. Josh tonight 0 for 4. He is the uh, only Ranger starter that has not been on base tonight. And Josh, a couple of strikeouts, a pop out, and a fly out. And balls misses low and in. It's 2 and 1. Hamilton just 0 for 3 against Qualls in previous matchups. The 2-1 pitch. Altuve to the backhand. And he throws on to first for out number two. Into that chip. Oh, I got a little crowded on the right side over there. <laughs> yeah, Correa and Altuve playing pretty close to each other. Altuve is pretty slick. Five seven, maybe five eight, at the most. Plays about six eight. Here's Shinsu Chu, who is one for three. He made that play like Domingo Ayala. You ever heard of Domingo no. Ayala? Uh -uh. <laughs> He's a guy who has a, has a website where he gives baseball instruction. Ah. So anyone at home wants to learn how to play baseball, check out Domingo Ayala. Turn in a double play. You'll see the same play Altuve just made. 
Is that his preferred method of, of going to your right? <laughs> you got to see it. I can't describe it. You have to. You okay. have to look it up and see it. Okay. I'll show you between innings. All right. If I can find it. <laughs> oh, Domingo's going to cut you a little uh, <laughs> cut, cut of the action. <laughs> I entertained my grandkids for about two days with his videos. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, two pitch coming to Chew. Now one and two. Jinsu at 2.39. It is uh, 14th home run of the year back in the first inning. Two run blast now with 50 RBI. Ball's retying his shoe out there. Right of just over 21,000 on hand here tonight. They're getting a little impatient with balls. Now the right hander's ready to go. Outside, two balls, two strikes. Call definitely checked the swing. Jason Castro calling for the slider. Same thing. Shinsu <laughs> wouldn't offer any. Three and two. Now Chu extends his eighth inning. Elvis Andrews would uh, get another shot at the plate. Now he's working very diligently on that uh, on the mechanics you were talking about, Tom. Getting. Getting ahead of that bat through to the ball. Yep. Balls and the payoff pitch. Lost him ball four. Chu with his second walk of the night. Well, folks, come on out uh, and meet Ranger Sean Tolleson and Rangers captain this Wednesday, August the 5th at Whataburger on East Northwest Highway in Dallas. Don't miss this chance to win great prizes. Meet one of your favorite Rangers and Rangers captain at Whataburger. Speaking of whom, there is Sean Towson out in the Ranger pen. It, it is a, a three-run game, so a save situation unless the uh, Rangers add on here with two outs. Elvis Andrews taking outside for ball one. Elvis two for four tonight. A pair of singles in each of his first two at-bats. Rounded out in the third and uh, flight out in the sixth. <laughs> Two and nothing. And Paul's the veteran out of Southern California. Grew up in the Harbor City area. Now lives down in Austin. Signed out of the University of Nevada, Reno. And he gets the outside corner with strike one. Elvis hitting at 258 as he awaits the Qualls pitch. Correa goes the short way to get the sliding chew. And the Rangers are gone in the eighth. No runs, no hits. The Walker left stranded. We're going to the ninth inning. It'll be up to Sean Tollins to protect a 12-9 Ranger lead.
Globe Live Park, Rangers on top, 12-9. Don't worry, we'll have uh, plenty of reaction coming your way after this one on Rangers Live, the post-game show. It has been an eventful evening, to say the least. We'll have the skipper, Jeff Bannister, Emily Jones, working the clubhouse for player reaction. Perhaps we'll hear from the man who hit the second fastest cycle since 74, Adrian Beltre. Plus, we'll have Jim Knox, Mark McLemore, and the greatest tandem in the broadcast game. Steve Busby, Tom Grieve, who we kick it back to now. We'll see you afterward on Rangers Live, the post-game show, guys. All right, Aaron, thank you. Well, well, turn it over to Sean Tollison. Tollison, 18 out of 19 in save opportunities, and he has his 20th opportunity here tonight. This is 47th game of the year. Three and two, the league hitting 236 against him. And he will face Preston Tucker to start things off. It'll be Tucker, Evan Gaddis, and Jed Lowry. Rangers leading 12 to 9. Tucker doubled his last time up. He is one for four, and he goes after Sean Tollison pitch without success. Well, Sean's going to have to face some good hitters, but he will miss Altuve, Gomez, and Correa. Sam Dyson pitched his way through the top of the lineup, gave up a hit. Got two outs, in a, including a strikeout. It'll be four, five, and six for Sean. Tucker able to lay off that changeup. One and one the count. Tucker along with his double is lined to third, popped to short, and grounded to short. There's the breaking ball for Sean Tallison. Gets in. It's one and two. Tallison picked up his 18th save in the New York series. The third game of that series. To center field, Leonis Martin. One out. Evan Gaddis to be next. Yes. The Rangers have won five of the nine meetings so far against the uh, Astros this year. One of the three here at uh, Globe Life Park in Arlington back in May was all they were able to get. They're trying to even the home series up and take a 6-4 to four lead in the overall series. Rangers also trying to win their second consecutive ball game and fifth in the last six tries here at home. Gaddis, a single in four trips. A single leading off the fourth inning in score. Off speed, and that is in for a strike. Kobe Lewis, pitcher of record for the Rangers. With the first six innings. Two balls and a strike. Going to be trying to win his fifth consecutive decision. That would uh, be a new high water mark for himself. I think that is fourth consecutive decision. My bad. Three and one now. Thomas and final uh, falling behind Gaddis. Gaddis hitting fourth or fifth in the order. He'll be followed by the third baseman, Jed Lowry. Now the three one. Gaddis climbing back in the box. He is ready to go. Bobby Wilson flashing the signs, and John Tollison with the payoff pitch. Got him looking. Gaddis barking at Paul Schreiber, the home plate umpire, as he walks back to the Astro dugout. That is out number two. Right, pitcher's pitch. Sean gets the call. Gaddis a little upset with that call. Bottom of the strike zone. Sometimes you get the call, sometimes you don't. Yep. Well, two outs. Here's Lowry. And he takes strike one. 
21,671. Most of those uh, left here. We'll be ready to uh, applaud a Ranger victory if John Towson can close the things out against Lowry. Lowry two for three officially tonight. He's single twice and walked. He has scored a run. Roby Lewis would be a 12-game winner. Odor, a diving catch, and that is a winner. Good net, going after the little knuckleball off the end of the bat. Colby Lewis wins his 12th of the year. Sean Tollison is 19th save, and the Rangers are victorious tonight in what started out to be a slugfest, but turned into uh, pretty much a pitcher's duel as the game went on. 12-9 the final. Colby Lewis, Adrian Beltre, in the first five innings, hitting for the third cycle of his career. The offensive highlight, and it took a defensive gem to end this thing here this evening. Yeah, he didn't have a choice, really. It wasn't a hard-hit ball, but he couldn't lay back on it and try to catch it on a hop. So he had to catch it in the air, and he went all the way for it, dove it, and caught it. And they're going to check out the replay. <laughs> What a play by Odor, and what a way to finish this thing off. Odor very much involved in the offense from the top of the order. He went uh, two for five tonight, but he had a single, a triple. He drove in two runs, and he scored a pair of runs. And Colby Lewis benefiting from the offense. And uh, speaking about offense, let's go down to Emily Jones, who has the outstanding offensive player tonight, Adrian Belfort. Yes, the paranoid hero of tonight's game. He is refusing to be doused with Powerade. Tonight, Adrian Beltre, the third cycle of your career. Uh, where does this one rank for you? Uh, I mean, I, I didn't expect a, a little guy like me to get a cycle. But, you know. <laughs> uh, it came out. You need your glove. No, it's fine. Oh, uh, okay. She's, sorry. I don't know what's going on exactly. Well played. Well played. Still. <laughs> the old man can still move a little bit. They got you. They got you. On, they got you on the comeback, though. Adrian, just tonight a special night for you. A great team win. Uh, what does this say about this team? Well, it says a lot, you know, we've been uh, trying to find our identity. Uh, I think uh, offensively we've, we've been up and down, going to be more consistent. Uh, and I think our offense is, is kind of cutting the groove. And hopefully we can keep it uh, like that the last two months because it's going to be a tight race. And uh, we believe we have the team to do it. What about for you personally? It's been an up and down season for you as well. What does tonight do for you? Yeah, I mean, it's nice to have a game like this to kind of get your confidence up. You know, I've been working on my swing to be more consistent too. I uh, haven't been driving the ball the way I wanted to, but uh, I think uh, the last couple of days uh, it's been uh, uh, a kind of something that it clicked, so hopefully I uh, can keep it up. I know you hate to talk about yourself and your accomplishments, yeah, but, to have, you me. <laughs> but to have three cycles in your career, you're among some pretty um, elite company. To accomplish something like that, what does it mean to you personally? I mean, when you're fast, <laughs> like I am. <laughs> You fact, like I am, it's true, it's that difficult. But you know what? It's, it's, it's been nice. It's been nice. I, uh, I don't think, uh, you know, I would ever thought about it, getting three cycles in my career. But, you know, it's, I'm humbly in, uh, accepting that. And, um, I mean, I'm proud of what I've done so far. Amy, you're so fast. <laughs> Adrian Beltre, you guys, back up to you. <laughs> All right, Ed, thank you very much. Adrian, uh, quick with the wit and quick with the feet. And the hands also. Adrian Beltre, uh, part of that... Uh, Big night offensively for the Rangers, and uh, after the ball game, he had to be quick to get away from those guys. Elvis and uh, Martin Perez after it. We'll come back with more from Globe Life Park right after this. A big Ranger win.